Well, this is different. Yes. Very. Well, yep. yeah, things very are different things are look things yeah. are looking different at the very least. Not much different, but different. Ah, uh, yes. Um, different look, different thing to cover. So yep. many different things. For the first time, we are covering a series. Yes. Fun fact: This is not the first series we were going to cover. No. We we're going to do other things, but then they didn't go through. We were going to do House of the Dragon, um, and then they just kind of fell through. We just ended up not. We were going to do Squid Games. We were gonna do. We were supposed to start with Squid Game. Yeah. This was almost two years ago. Now we were gonna do Squid Game. Didn't do that. I think it was because Ooh. they took me way too long to finish that show. <laughs> um. And then we didn't do that. And then we were gonna do House of the Dragon. We didn't do it. But uh, we weren't actually going to do The Last of Us this soon. We were gonna do Tron Legacy before this but you and mentioned then, yeah. that the last of us was ending very very soon and i went okay let's just do that then yeah, why not no so yeah this is our it's very trendy. first tv show yeah trendy little topic to cover you and i like the game and whatnot and we like the series i think we and do spoiler spoiler alert yeah yeah we both like the yeah. show yeah mm -hmm. so I, I said why not let's do it and i was like okay um, you son of a bitch i am in yeah yeah we're talking about the last of us today um before we kind of get into this uh we should mention that we did play the game yes For albeit me, it was ages a, ago yeah but... it was a long time ago that i played the game this is a 10 year old game now i think exactly this month is uh the one the 10 year anniversary of the game mm -hmm. it's been an entire decade but you know me i played it so much that i basically know most of what you would probably so it's pretty fresh in my mind regardless of me not having played it recently but i, yeah, I know no, stuff uh, th i know the main beats that's it I, I do not remember a lot of the small details um but yeah I I know the details of the game. I played the first game. I played a small Oops. bit of the second game. Um, I I, I didn't play the I second game. I intend to get back to it, but it will it will happen eventually. Not saying it will happen anytime soon. I didn't play the second game, but I did see everything that I, that I had. Uh, I did buy it recently, so that's a play. But I want to play in like some kind of special occasion because I know what I'm getting up. To, you know. Get myself into. I bought the game a bit after. I bought it the year it came out. I bought it 2020, but I bought it on discount. I bought it during, I think it was oh Cyber Monday. I bought it for Cyber Monday. They discounted it, I think, like half off. So I got it for 30 bucks at the time. I got it for, I got it for nine bucks or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, a little I more than the, the serves, but I cannot, know. I cannot say I regret my purchase, but. It is what it is. Either way, um, I'll tell you when I play it. Yeah. Either way, we're here with this show now, and yeah, we might as well get right into it. I mean, how do we want to approach this? Well, I think we should talk about like when we first heard there was going to be a show. What, what were oh, our okay. little expectations? What we thought? Uh, when I first heard they were making a TV series of The Last of Us, my first question was why. Because, um, granted, this was when did they announce this show? Like 2019. So this was pre. This was pre Sonic. This was pre Arcane. This was pre. This wasn't pre Castlevania, but it was. This was pre Last of Us Two. Yeah. So, it was a much different expectation. I kind of want to look up. I'm not even sure at this point. I think it was 2019 when they announced it that they were doing a show. Because if also if my memory serves correct, the uh, it was uh, it was through the first announced March twenty twenty. Was it twenty twenty? So mm -hmm. if my memory serves me correctly, a the talks on doing a Last of Us live action film was actually in the pro in talks since like twenty fourteen. If I remember correctly, Sam Raimi was attached to either produce or direct a Last of Us movie. <laughs> 
Um, obviously, that fell through, um, and now we have this this series. Um, my my first initial reaction to the series was kind of it's kind of like uh why. And now, if it really was March of twenty twenty, then it was post Sonic World, but it was pre. It was post Sonic, post Castlevania, but Castlevania hadn't finished yet, so it was still kind of in this like this weird limbo. Uh, so we're like, it was, it was Sonic and Castlevania were the outliers in this whole video game conversation. Uh, <coughs> so this is like a like a little thing about how video game adaptations usually suck. Yeah. So there was, there's obviously that. Uh, it's gonna, it's still gonna happen every time we get a, a video game adaptation. It, it's, it's always gonna happen. Oh, God of War. <laughs> that, yeah, that God of War Amazon series is terrifying. Um, uh, but Lord help me. Yeah, Lord help us. Um, with this series, I kind of just went. The game's already cinematic as it is. I just felt like doing a one-to-one -one adaptation was a weird call. Holy shit, wasn't Uncharted, like, in the works by this time also? Like, we knew uh, it was Uncharted to was out. filming at this time. Yeah, and we, like, knew about it, and we were like... Because it, it, it was supposed to come out in 2020, but it got pushed to 2021, and then got pushed to 2022 because of, you know, old COVID. Yeah. You mentioned how cinematic... Blast of Us itself is, but then there's Uncharted, like, whew. Yeah. Good luck replicating that, and you made it worse. The point being, we're talking about Uncharted, so... Um, <laughs> I said Uncharted, I meant The Last of Us. I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this, this is what the section is about. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about The Last of Us. Uh, and then, what was it? I think, not too long after that, they announced Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey were cast... And I went, okay. Um, but I wasn't convinced. There was like a small bit of like solace in knowing that the sh main showrunner on this is Craig Mazin, who wrote and show ran Chernobyl, which while I didn't see that series, I heard nothing but amazing things about it. Um, so it was, there was some kind of like solace in knowing it was pro like d most likely in good hands. But the fear is always there. Oh yeah, and then, and then of course his his masterpiece superhero movie. Is that him? Is that Craig yeah, that's Mason? Him. That's him. <laughs> He'll uh, start somewhere. Yeah. Um, but yeah, th there was definitely uncertainty in this in this series going into it. Um, and that uncertainty did not. I, I like my fears of this show were not quelled. Until, like, that first trailer. I think was when, like, a bit of my uncertainties were, like, not, like, completely silenced, but they were quieter than normal. You thought, hey, it looks kind of, it looks pretty good. It's like, when the first trailer came out, I was like, okay, we have something here. Mm. And then it was when that full trailer came out where I was like, okay, they're paying attention they're they're really putting in the effort to do something well, trailers um, can be deceiving trailers can be deceiving but trailers are all are usually a good indicator of what of what it can be you know it is meant to give you a, a look at it so while trailers can be deceiving they offer a look at it and what i saw was okay they're putting in some effort Um, and then the show came out, or the first episode premiered, and, uh, yeah, I was, I was hooked pretty instantly. I was like, okay, all right, you sold me. <laughs> Interesting. So, for me, it was some of that, the, the why behind it, and also, we were, I was very fresh off reading the leaks for Last of Us 2. So, 
that just kind of like poisoned the well there because I knew Druckmann was involved with this, and I I had like a like such a hatred towards this man for <laughs> for for what I thought he was gonna do, and then last episode didn't make it any better after all of that. So I I was going in very pessimistic and with huge skepticism towards the show. Uh. And every info that came out of it, I was like, okay, sure. When I heard that Pedro Pascal and, and um, Bella Ramsey were cast, I'm like, well, not my first choice, and I don't know who the hell Bella Ramsey is. Game I of Thrones we'll people see. knew very much who, who they were. No, no, I, I knew who Pedro was. I just didn't know who Bella was. No, 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 no Bella. That's, some, that's yeah. what I'm referring to. Game of Thrones fans knew very much who they were. I forget the character. Was it... Something of Mormont. I don't know. I just remember that character getting pretty, pretty big praise. Pretty sure though. she was there for like. Pretty sure she was. She like was. Movie, she right? was there for like the eighth season of Game of Thrones. Oh, they, the worst season. <laughs> yeah, they were there for a short time. Not, uh, not, not a long time. Yeah. One of the few things that I remember getting praised about that season was that character. I, I've never heard of her. But um, that was it. That was all I knew about. Bella Ramsey was that they were on Game of Thrones. That was it. Right. Uh, but yeah. Pedro, of course, everybody fucking knows Pedro Pascal. Yeah, the flavor of the month. Yeah. Every Shit, time. The, the flavor of the last few years, apparently, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, and yeah, I didn't see the trailer, honestly. I, I, I was interested, but I was still, I was still gonna watch it, regardless. Uh, and yeah, then I saw the first episode, and then I thought, and then after that, I was like, oh, okay. I see you. You have me. I'll keep watching. And, and then, and then you and kept then, watching. Yeah, I kept watching. Yeah. Eight weeks of this bullshit. Yeah. Nine weeks. Well, nine nine weeks. weeks. Yeah. Nine yeah. weeks. Yeah. Always oh, at this bullshit. Yeah. And now here we are. Um, and it's safe to say I think we both enjoyed this show. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, yeah. It's but. It's it's I will say this, despite how good this show is, it has made me ten times more terrified for what's Oops. now confirmed to be the next two seasons. Uh yeah. because they've confirmed that The Last of Us Part Two will not be a single season uh s s story. Season two, part one, part two. <laughs> I'll either part one, part two it or we'll do season two, season three. Right. Obviously, I think we can save that conversation for later. Um, sure, but is it the, we're definitely gonna have that conversation. But it, it it certainly just likes to set that up. This show had many fears for me. Um, there were many things I was terrified about with this show. But now the dust is settled. I am ten times scared, more scared for what they're gonna do for the next season. Um, yeah. But that's yeah, that's a that's a later conversation, but. I guess yeah. now we can really like get into the meat and potatoes. We do only two hours, guys, over that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you want to just you want to go episode by episode, or do you want to just generally talk about it? Hmm. Oh, I suppose we can try to do episode by episode. Okay. See if we can like recall yeah. stuff. We can probably just generally talk about each episode instead yep. of trying to like you know beat by beat it. So. Uh, premiere episode i've seen that episode twice it's the only episode uh episode of the show i watched more than once i've seen it three times i saw it with my stepbrother the first time the first time i premiered i saw it with you like an hour later i think uh and then i saw it with my stepdad again third time i saw it with you and then a little more recently i want to say like at the beginning of this month i uh, watched it with my mom and dad mm. They have not continued watching the show. I mean, just saying, I, I've, I'm pretty sure I've seen every episode more than once. No, uh, but other than that, I have not seen any episode more than once. Ooh. Not because it's like I haven't had any desire. It's just I just haven't, you know, there's been other things I've been watching in like, yep. the meantime. I will say that. Uh, no, that's an irrelevant. That's an irrelevant point. Never mind. I, uh, ooh, what I was, gonna, I was gonna say something, but it was completely irrelevant and not not involved in the conversation at all. So oh I, yeah, what not gonna say it. What I want to go on a tangent, not us. Whoa, not us. Yeah, not us. Not us. Whoa. Yeah. Self reflection. 
So episode one. Mm-hmm. So episode one starts in a very interesting way. It doesn't start with the Last of Us story as, as we would have known it. So it's kind of a subversion for us who played the game. Like, oh, what the hell is this? It starts uh, in this new show that takes place in the, what, the 80s about? It was, I think it was the 70s. The 70s, around based that on, time. Based on, like, the clothing. Yeah, it, it's about, it, it starts with these uh, two scientists in a, in a, in a little late night show. Yeah it, was a, yeah, it was a late night show, yeah. Talking about how talking about cortisol and fungi and yeah we're generally how, t- yeah generally talking about like fungal infections yeah yeah and interesting point about how if the world ever got warmer then those cordyceps could evolve into humans and it's very interesting how it kind of sets up a little more about the uh the it's, uh infection it's more a, than the game more than the game did yeah, it does more, this game this show does i almost said the game uh, this show does more work to set up the cordyceps more than the game does. Yeah, it's a lot more ambiguous in the game, but, which is fine. Which is fine, but it, it, in the game, compared to the show, the game utilizes the cordyceps way more. Yeah. Which is an interesting point to talk about that many people have been talking about. Make some explanations about the thing, and it's pretty cool, pretty neat. Um, I thought that was a very, I thought that was a great way to it was a great, the show. It was, it was it a, was very a great, really great way to like set up the you know, the kind of the tone of the show and like this real world fear kind of sits in with you for a second. Right. Yeah. Like that line, it's like, what happens if, if it happens and the guy we just lose. wants, we lose. Yeah. And I was like, okay, you're starting yeah. off on a good note. <laughs> yeah, and, and everyone, everyone in the audience and the late night show himself guy was there like, huh? Okay. <laughs> I, hope that, I hope that never happens anyway. Yeah. Immediate uh, cut to 2003, which is a big change. Not really a big change. It's 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 a notable change from that the game. A big change. I the game think... starts in 20. The infection breaks or it, the outbreak starts in 2013 in the game. I'm having it take place. The rest of the game taking place in 2033. Well, this show, the outbreak is in 2003, making the rest of the series take place in 2023. Look, it's 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 the world in real life now. When you look at the show, it's it's happening in real life. There's it's terrible. It's when I first heard about it, I was like, okay, that's just an inconsequential change. It really doesn't change too much about the series, other than like what a technology would be around. I suppose so. And you know, there there you go. Some two thousands, early two thousands nostalgia. There you go. Look look at look at all these clothes. Look at all these DVD players. Oh my god, I bet I bet you wish you were in the two thousands with those D V D players. Remember D V D? The what it was shitty disc, right? Am I right? <laughs> it, is kind of, it is kind of a shitty disc. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Blu ray. Yeah. But um yeah, the, the the also another thing, uh if you remember if you happen to play the game, the game starts with uh um Sarah on the couch waiting for Joel to get home. Mm-hmm. Well, the series starts actually way before that. Yeah, it starts right at the beginning of that day. So you see Sarah, Joel, and Tommy's relationship together, and you get to see Sarah go about her day, her day where she goes to go fix the watch. Yeah, uh, Joel's broken watch. Interesting stuff about, about everything happening in there. They uh, they do some good teasing of of the uh, events to come with a uh, a a kid at at Sarah's school twitching while you know working on working. Uh, a few ambulances happening around sirens while she was going out going off to get her dad's watch fixed. Uh, you can hear on like the radio in yeah. Miller's kitchen talking about like other countries that is directly referenced in the game as well. Yes, and stuff about countries, and you know something about pancakes. Um, I'll leave it at that until now. I'll leave yeah. it at that for later. Oh, but um, yeah, Every- it's. I thought it was a really great setup because the 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 premiere was the longest episode of the season. Unfortunately, yes. we'll talk about that later. Uh-huh. Um, with it being, I think, with credits it was like an hour and ten minutes. Hour twenty. It's feature, uh, it was a feature length film. It was an hour and twenty with uh the the season T 
te- like the season tease and then the behind the episode. Yeah. But the actual episode itself was probably like an hour and 10, hour 10, hour 15. Well, oh, actually, funny about that. When I was watching the final episode, it said that it was 43 minutes, like yeah. the menu. But then when I clicked in, it said 53 minutes. So I, I think the added. So I think the, the menu, when you click on it, it says the time of the actual show happening. And, mm-hmm. and then the behind the scenes is extra added time. So I'm yeah. pretty sure that the, the, the whole thing was 120. And then plus with the behind the scenes is like 125 hour minutes. Uh, I remember it, it was 121. It was uh, 121. And that was with credits and with uh, the in the episode and the like this season on the last of us thing. Yeah, it was it was it was quite long. Yeah. When I first saw that, I was like an hour and 20 minutes. OK, this is this is gonna be a long premiere. And then it was like it wasn't really it was closer to like an hour, 15 hour, like an hour, 10 hour, 15 Still a very long premiere episode. I don't think I've ever seen a premiere that long. Yeah, it was it was worth the time because they spent most of the episode just, you know, letting you spend time with Sarah, which the game doesn't do to the same extent as the show. To put it to put it that way. Yeah. I welcome to that change. It's like I've, I, you know, spending the time with Sarah, I, I thought makes her eventual death that much more um, impactful. It's a fine addition. Um, but then once the outbreak starts, we're pretty much in beat for beat the game, which is the first time the series actually like straight up does the game. And I went, oh, they're following this faithfully. Yeah. It's a, like it, this series makes a lot of changes, but for the most part, it's a pretty faithful adaption of the game. Like if you know the game, it's you are gonna know where this series goes pretty beat for beat. Outside of a few things that they changed, but uh, I mean, for you, for someone who's knows the game more than I do, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, had, I mean, I know, I think we've already talked about this, but I, how did you feel about the changes generally made in the series? Uh, some of the changes were all right. Some were not that good. But there there was a rare instance where there were some, some like very, very few were actually better than the game. Some very few changes. So that was pretty good. But like there's, there's uh, some minor things in there that irk me a lot that that the game really solidifies into making more sense and the show kind of just misses why those things in the game in the game worked but uh yeah i feel like i feel like this first episode had some of those has some of those issues uh one being in the opening i don't know if i should say it right now but uh am i am i am i on the go should i yeah for should sure yeah go ahead all right well so in the game after Tommy, Joel, and Sarah are in the car. The truck and the crushes a a truck crushes into them. Mm-hmm. And st- instead of uh, it was like it was a wheel of an airplane <laughs> that would have killed yep. them. <laughs> it's like those airplane was are, are fucking huge. If they if you yeah. they're like bigger than they're like as big as a truck. If those things yeah. fly at you, you're boom, you're done. I mean, you graze them, but like that would have like taken well, half the truck if off. I had to look at that shot a lot. Um, and Corridor Digital actually did a breakdown of that shot. The wheel bounces off the off of a building into the truck into the side of the truck, flipping it oh, over. They're, oh, they're dead. Um, and the 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 shot looks weird because it feels like it, the wheel looks super small until it yeah. gets to the window where it bounces off of the building into the truck, and it suddenly just gets huge. Yeah, that's uh because it's an they, airplane wheel. It's an airplane wheel. They are dead. No, sorry, not just an airplane, a like full on like transportation, yeah, like a it's a, a, a man, a flight. Yeah, it's a big, bigger airplane. It guys. was a big airplane. Yeah, that that was like a that was like an irk for me because like ugh, yeah. I, I should I should kill him. The, the truck the truck was better. The truck. Uh, and then there was the part where with the cop car, cr- tr- uh, crashed into the truck, mm-hmm. which made us which like some quote-unquote blocked off 
the alleyway where Joe was with Sarah and then Tommy was on the, on the street that blocked them off even though he could like go around or uh, watching under. watching that scene again uh if I remember correctly the sh- the the car was pushed against the wall it was not a situation where he could just walk around well he can go under he could have went under but I also seem to remember there being fire on the bottom of the car too so there it, it might have been just as a I mean, I fit. I don't remember. I I, I watched this recently, but it, I don't remember if there was fire on the bottom. But I do remember the car being pretty close up against the wall. Um. So there's that. But yeah, it was like a. All right. Uh, the way uh, they split yeah. apart in the game was better, a little more natural. But yeah, it was fine. Uh, it wasn't like a this ruins the episode thing. Yeah, no, none of that. Although, well, after they get split off, they, you know, like like in the game, they, they're they being chased down by a couple of infected. In this case, it's just one guy who they found. And they, for some reason, there were a bunch of zombies eating eating a collective group of people. Like one spot. Mm-hmm. It was a little weird, but one of them spots them. And they, they have to run. They go to the back of this of this diner. The zombie stumbles a lot. And then they run outside into a very open field. Yep. And then Looking there's the, the very mil- reminiscent. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then there's you know some military guy that was posted out there helps them out. You know, shoots a zombie. And you know how in the game the guy shoots them, but you know how in the game there's an established hill because you're you're climbing up the hill in the game, trying to escape yes. the, the, zomb- the in, zombies. In the show, they walk out and they're on like this this hill. It's like this patch of grass, and then it kind of forms into a hill. Yeah, they didn't really establish that hill. It just kind of just came out of nowhere. No. It was very odd. I, like, like, they wanted to do it like the game. But there was just a hill there. Yeah. Oh, all right, then. But yeah, very inconsequential, regardless. The, you know, the, the core of the scene is still effectively done. Mm-hmm. Um... I will say watching this scene again with my mom was torture because she just kept going, Oh my God, is she dead? Is she dead? <laughs> is she dead? And she would look at me after, after she dies in his arms and the thing flashes 20 years later, she still looks at me and goes, did she die? Uh, how are you? How are you fucking watch it, mom? And I just looked at her and went, just watch the show. Just watch it. It's, it's like just please just watch it. I had a fucking mic's hard in my hand, and I was I was not feeling well that day. Uh, I was just like, please just watch the show. Mother, I beg of you. Yeah, yeah, but anyway, yeah, um, 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 you know, all parents do it. But yeah, Sarah fucking died. When we, got, when got... we watched the episode together, you and I, uh, that scene did make me cry. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we we were all quiet for a little me. bit, and then and then I heard you yeah, say, "Yeah, because oh, there, there, there was three of us in the call when we were watching it, and like we all went dead silent, and then like yep. maybe a minute passed by, and then you suddenly heard me fucking sniffle, oh. <laughs> and you went, "You good?" And I was like, "Oh, this shit, this shit got me, bro. This shit got me, bro. Damn." Uh, and then you start, so fucking Sebastian started witch cackling. Yeah. Keep in mind, this was a day before a. This was a day before a very important event for us. So, yeah, without saying why, obviously. Um, I don't think I know what you mean. <laughs> Honestly, right, I'll 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 DM you. All right, yeah, yeah. Um, I was gonna say. Oh, yeah. The, there's still the the issue that the game had. There's still there's still an issue with a uh, with the show in the game, where I don't understand how Sarah was the one to die. Or like I understand she died too, but like Joel was fine. He got a grace or two, but like this this is an issue in the game in, in the game and the show where Joel spins around to avoid the bullets somehow, but then he he he, he just still would have gotten hit by like at least three or two bullets. And even though he turns around, it hits Sarah? 
and she's the one that dies, but Joe is like basically fine. That always confused me, and I don't think the show made it better at all. Yeah, I don't know what you got on that, but I got nothing. Yeah, it, it was always very odd. Uh, yeah. I I don't know. I just kind of took it at face value, face value. What it was yeah. was I don't know. Um. Yeah, the show still does the twenty years later, and we get to see. I don't think the show quite goes into what life in the Boston QZ was like more than the game did. But also, that's kind of unfair as the game is like 20 hours. The show in total is probably like 10. Well, you don't, you don't spend too much time in the Boston QZ. Um, no, but you spend more enough time to understand what life is like for them, I think, more. Well, uh, well, I, I, I'm gonna say I think the show makes an effort to explain what the QCs are like. Oh yeah, 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 they totally. I'm not saying that the show doesn't do it. I'm just saying I think it's not a knock against it. I'm just saying I think the game does it more. Well, what did you gain from the game that you didn't gain from the show? Uh, it's 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 again. This is why I say it's unfair. Uh, <laughs> the game does the game thing where characters are around in the world talking to each other, and you can hear them talk. Yeah. And you can see things <coughs> excuse me. You can see things um as they're moving around in the world. Well, I think I'm gonna do a little disagree on this because the show starts off well <laughs> Joe's perspective when we see when we next see Joe is Tim doing some work. Uh Joe Joe doesn't start off with doing any work in the in the show. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think they already give us some some context on how Everything functions there with uh, they 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 start with Joel burning burning some dead bodies, possibly infected bodies later on, um, and then afterwards, him getting his his money, his uh, ration cards, and then asking one of the guards if there's any more work, and then he he mentions the guard mentions uh street sweeping or sewage maintenance, and then mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, the sewage, the one with the ship pays more. Mm-hmm. So they they gave us they gave us some, I think they gave us some more info info on on how Boston QC is or how even more more QCs and how they work in that world more than the game. Yeah, you're right. There there's characters talking and whatnot, but not much that we see happening. It's mostly just them walking around to a certain QC because the game is very rapid fire. Uh, uh first after that uh. After the twenty year time skip, it's uh we gotta get we gotta get uh our guns. Robert sold us out, that son of a bitch. We gotta we gotta go across, we gotta go get our gear and whatnot. It's very very immediate. Yep. Which isn't bad, just it's very very straight to the point. Yeah, this but episode it's, took its time a little more. Definitely. Um speaking of Robert, I'm not mad in the slightest that we didn't have to do the fucking foot chase. <laughs> I am not mad in the slightest. Uh, uh, speeding that, sad. speeding, speeding that along, I thought was good for the pacing of the, of the episode. Maybe a little, maybe a little sad that we didn't get to have that iconic, that cool scene with with uh, Joel breaking Robert's arm and whatnot. Yeah. Joel being cool, I like, I like, I like when Joel's being cool. But uh, I, I guess I'm fine with, with what happened. But you and I had some issues with how how things ended up, yeah. how we got there. Yeah. It was mighty convenient that mighty convenient. Uh, Joel and Tess happened to walk into where Merle, Merle, I keep wanting to say Merle because that's the actress, uh, where Marlene happened to be. Um, yeah, I don't, oh, but, uh... I don't, watching the episode again, uh, my dad was very confused when we got there. I was like, what the hell happened? I'm like, I think Robert and his guys went and stormed them. As he went to go sell his shit to Marlene. Well, they went to go sell Joel's shit to Marlene. And then, I guess a fight broke out because all of Robert's dudes are dead. And there's a couple Fireflies still standing. Only two, Marlene. Uh, we saw two. I think there was another one. But we didn't see it. Marlene and Kale. Gail. The, the girl who lost her, who lost her ear. Yeah, you don't have a sick. fucking ear on your head. That was rude. That was very Literal. rude. No, was, no, Marlene. I mean it. It was very rude, but like, you're missing an ear, bitch. 
Still oh, rude. Uh, she did not have to do her like that. No, not at all. Marlene's Marlene's a, a dick. Marlene's an ass in this in this show. Yes, she's a uh, much bigger asshole than I think she was in the game. Yes, yes. We we'll get into that later. Yeah. Oh, I uh, we should talk about how they introduced Tess. She's a. Uh, oh yeah, she's, she's our, she yeah she's fucking talking to Robert. Yeah, she she was getting interrogated after having gotten beat up and probably kidnapped over there, brought over to which we didn't place. see. We didn't see in the game. No, she were introduced to Tess, but with that, we're introduced in the uh, game. We're introduced with Tess when she comes in after she's already gotten uh, beaten up. Yeah, where where she apparently killed them. <laughs> Allegedly, they they hint at it. Yeah, it's a very different show with Tess. Um, he saw she's. She, I, li- I like. I like. Uh, I like the the scene. She's uh, doing her best to, s- to say everything that she needs to say so she doesn't mm-hmm. get killed by by those people. Mm-hmm. It's like it's fine, man. Don't worry about it. Your your guys are assholes. Just punish them. Rip a finger off. Whatever you do, it's just. I'm not gonna sit down for you. It's like, but it's if, fine. If Joel sees this, it's I'm gonna die. And she's like, I'll deal with Joel. I'll deal with Joel. Don't worry. He answers to me. Okay. Yeah, I like that. She's she's acting like as calm as she possibly can while saying what she needs to say to not fucking die. Yeah. <laughs> because they'll kill her. And then, um, uh, and then and thank she gets God. Locked up, she gets locked up in a Fedra prison for like a day. And yeah, and why is that? In. Because, because the, fireflies the fireflies started, started fucking bombing. blowing things up. Yeah, and thank God the bomb didn't fucking kill her. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Right next to her. Yeah, right next to her face, even. Yeah. It's okay. The other guy, the other guy cushioned her yeah. face exploding. I guess so. Yeah. Um. And yeah. Um. Already after after Tess and Joel reunite in in his apartment, we see that they they already have a, a pretty a relationship that's that's much more different in the show <laughs> that it, that it, that it is in the game. It's a lot more intimate and close than in the it's game. It's out there. We're outright a couple. Yeah. yeah, it's it's no, it's not hinted at. It's just it's practically said. Well, that they uh, were they were a couple. Yeah, they 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 are in a way together. But like afterwards, later on, they they talk about they talk about how well episode two test talks about how I know you don't return. You never return those feelings that I have for you. It it, it wasn't exactly like that, but like it was like during her. Her final stand, where she says she said something like that. So like, yeah, Joe was very intimate with her, but he, he nothing that he ever admits to. I think that made that that made that pretty. But clear. they were, but they were also very clear that they were very, very close. Yeah, they were. They close. were not. And, they were not just friends. So in the game, they were very close, but it was never they, hinted at that they had any like no, tension it was, between it, them. It, it, it was. It was hinted. But it was never. It was. It was never any more than like a hint. Yeah. No, they they don't they don't outright show them being very intimate. Yeah. They, they show Joel caring about her. Like he he goes out of his way to, uh, deal with her injuries after she comes back to his apartment. Robert Smith. He, but he's not, because in the show Joel is very. He's he's very he's angry when he sees her face. He he's wondering like who the fuck is I'll fuck a fucking film. Joe is like, what the fuck happened to in the game, Joe's like, what the fuck happened to you? Jesus Christ. <laughs> These assholes still with us. And my God, you got fucked up, Tess. Jesus. <laughs> Let's go. In the <laughs> show, he's ready to go. He's ready to go. Um uh, and both says he cares he cares very much about her, even though he'll never admit it. In the show it's it's a much it's a much deeper yes, it, than the game ever let on. It's safe to say that this they tell us already that this is a more vulnerable Joel. Yeah, this is a very than, different Joel. Very yeah, not not Joel. No, okay, not too different, just all more vulnerable. Yeah, because this he still has his uh his he's, he's, he's much him. he's much more openly emotional than he was. Openly emotional, game. yes, exactly. Which is which is fine because at first when it's they fine. started doing that, I was like, I don't know if this is gonna work. It worked out. It worked out. I think it it's, it still worked. I still it still worked in the tones of the game and the themes of the game. Like what Joel is supposed to be, that worked yep. out. Um, it's just now he's a little more openly emotional. I guess I can. I mean, I think I'll say now. I still like game Joel more. Say that. I uh, I, 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 I think I can get into why they're on. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. We can. We have. I think we're gonna definitely get more into Joel later. 
Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we've we also kind of completely grazed over the introduction to Ellie, where she's being um tied up by we fireflies. Getting there by fireflies, and yes, they're like, all right, count to ten, and she fucking does it very quickly. It's like, all right. There, here's Ellie. No, slowly. Slowly. One, One two, two, three, four, three, five. Four, five. You. Yeah. I think very early on, I was like, okay, this is Ellie when she threw out that first motherfucker. I think that was when I was like, all right, we, we've got Ellie and Ellie's here. <laughs> it sounded like her. I, I guess I'll say it already. It took me some convincing to buy into Bella. Took me like three episodes, four episodes. There we go, <laughs> until she got to me. But uh, yeah, Bella, Bella, I can say right now, Bella's really good in the show. Um, yeah, very, very good. Bella is very, very good. Um, it did not take me four episodes, but um, uh, I was very immediately like, all right, Ellie's here because I was very much paying attention to Bella's performance constantly. I was, I was like, all right. What 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 is they doing? Because Ellie is a but, character. It's Ellie needs to work if, if, for like this show to succeed. That needs to work, and th- and those two together need to work. Thankfully, they very much do. Yes, good chemistry. Uh, the thing for me with Bella, like the first three episodes, was that she a little too comfortable in her role I don't think she was pretty much oomph into it uh, especially if I can compare it to what Ashley was doing in the first game where she was clearly going out of her out of her zone to do what she needed to do to me Bella felt way too comfortable in her role until episode 4 where she, we really started to push her into that and then, then I really dug it I, I didn't think she was bad per se I just thought yeah, it's all right. And then, woo. there you go. Yeah. Um, I I will say whenever they gave her dialogue that was straight out of the game, uh, Bell did a pretty good job with that. Holy shit! I'm actually outside. Yeah. Um, the, <laughs> that that, I, <laughs> that was good. to to, to kind of jump ahead a bit. Um, one line of dialogue that I was terrified was the. The truth is, I'll be. I will just be more scared when Joel was going to leave Ellie. That conversation is so pivotal. I was terrified about it. If there's a running theme of what I'm talking about in this show, it's I was terrified for a lot of things because of how how crucial they are. Um. I mean, I don't know. I don't know your opinion on that, but because we don't really, we haven't, we've talked about a handful of the episodes together, but we haven't really openly discussed the entire series. Uh, if you need my opinion on the uh, on the conversation they had in the in the show, the important mm-hmm. one, it was good. It worked. Yeah. It also helps. West. It also helps that they just nearly <laughs> line for line took it. <laughs> it's, it's especially what led to there in the game. It was really silly. <laughs> But in the game, uh, the game, it was very silly w- how we got there. So in the game, she steals a horse from Tommy's thing because she, uh, Chisabel was catching the idea of what Joel was trying to do, and then she sort of just ran out of the fucking uh, community base and whatnot, and mm-hmm. ran to the forest. And and oh Jesus Christ, this is really stupid. She so during during the time we go after her following her tracks we go and we stumble into some bandits in a certain area so the game is telling me that she ran by those bandits and avoided them while tommy and joel didn't okay sure and yeah we had to fight them off and then later on we finally finally catch her in some cabin in the woods that's that's, that's that, that doesn't have any effect it is it's a very clean cabin nothing's happening and there she was, just chilling in the window, reading, reading some girl's diary and whatnot. Ooh. And and it's interrupted by fucking Tommy going in and being like, "Hey, 
uh, we got trouble with this bandits happening. This is a game, so we have to do some game shit. Cool, got it. So the show didn't have to do that. The show was just them and, and they Tommy set up some very different circumstances for what was going on. In that yes, <laughs> so that that is an improvement in the in the show. Vastly, might I add. If you watch the behind the episode for every single one, they were very blatant when they said, "Yeah, no, we just took this from the game." Yeah. Like every time, it was like, "Yep, no, we're just gonna take this directly from the game. We're not even gonna try to change it." Yeah, and it was very, very good. Which so it showed a lot of care, care, and respect for the material. Mm -hmm. And also, we haven't really brought this up. Neil is incredibly involved with this series, and he wrote and directed a few of these episodes. Uh, yes. Yeah, I did a good job. I can't, I can't, can't try to lie about that. He did a good job. I, I think he might have done the worst job, but not bad, per se. There's an episode that I think is the worst one that he was involved in fully, but not bad. Just I know he only directed one episode, wrote two of them. Yes. Uh, the rest of it was Craig Mason. Yes. In terms of the writing, now, Craig Mason didn't direct any of the episodes, but he wrote every single episode but two and seven. I'm almost trying to imagine Craig in the room, like, uh, hearing Neil's ideas, like, okay, Neil, I'll give okay, it to consideration. <laughs> Something like that. No, I'm sure he has a lot of respect for Neil. More than I fucking would. He, he, he very clearly has a lot of respect for for Neil and his opinions and why he's there in the first place. Yeah, I'm glad Neil was there. Don't get me wrong. Neil Neil is still it's part a, it's of... It's a good thing that Neil was there. Yeah, Neil is still part of, you know, a, re a reason of why Last of Us... This Last of Us, the first game. Um, although, shout out to uh, the co-director, though. He's oh, good, so too. the co-creator? Yeah, the co-creator. Of, of the game or the show? Uh, oh. The game. I got it. I got his name. It's in it's my tongue. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Um, uh, Bruce, Bruce Straley. There we go. Yeah. The show did, did was very unapologetic of what it took from from the game. Yeah. Um. But yeah. That's. I mean, that's pretty much like the most of episode one. Uh, there's these bits like that I like. There was one bit that I didn't like when I first saw it. Come around to it. Um, it's the bit at the end of the first episode where the Fedra guy points the guns at him and Ellie. Oh, by the way, that Fedra guy. Hmm? Yeah, that Fedra guy is is a guy that we see in the beginning of the episode where Joe is giving him some. Yes, some giving him some, was, yeah, giving him some pills. Yeah, yeah. Which uh, something I like about uh, about that scene is that Joe wanted the bag back because that's probably really hard to come by in that oh, world. So that's, you, uh, you got to think, right? It's a plastic yeah. bag. There's yeah, no way that's easy to come by. Yeah, where is it you're gonna find that at this point? So that's a uh, that's good attention to detail, and then he gets some cigarettes, which also, well, how are you gonna find that at that point? It's you have very, to make them. Very, you have to make yeah, them. Yeah, it's possibly very rare to come by by, by that time. And uh, like oh, they, something, they something. actively tell us that the only things they could make in the world now are pills and guns. Oh, something important that we kind of missed. Uh, uh, Joe's motivation. He's trying to look for his brother. Yes. That's in important. The, in, yeah. In the game, it's it's. I just need my shit back. Yeah. In the show, it's. Back. I haven't heard from Tommy in six months. Yep. What the look fuck? For, gotta look for my boy. Um. And yeah, that's basically the whole thing. He's trying to get a battery. He's he, he's making deals with the federal guy. A, he's trying to get a car battery. Car battery. He, he's he's got the the truck. He needs to see the battery to work. That's why they go over robber. Robber shoot them over. It it, it, it connects, but how at least how used to it in the end is kind of just very convenient. But uh, as as we said, but yeah, very different motivations for Joel. He, it's uh, a interesting change, but I dig it. Yeah, tells us, tells us a lot about this Joel. Um, but yeah, at the end of the episode, when I first saw it, I was like, okay, we don't need this. When Joel flashes to the moment with Sarah, with the military guy. Oh, yeah, we got it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, no, we get it. Um. I've come around on that. That doesn't. 
actually, it doesn't bother anymore. I actually like it. Uh, but it is one of those, yeah, we know. <laughs> Just in case, you know. But that's a, so what what's the upside about it if it made you if it turned you around? It just doesn't bother me anymore. Uh, like I see what they were doing. They were trying to enforce it, you know. And that's fine. I, I understand I mean, it, what it, they were doing. It's 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 it, a little it's heavy handed, but it's fine. It I mean to me it's like Come on, give give some confidence in your audios. We can we can understand. It's fine. We, we we're in the same episode. It's also yeah. like the only time the show ever does something like that, if I remember well, correctly. Cross, exactly. So it's kind of weird. It's like why? Because most of the just time do... the show is like pretty much figure it out, dum dums. But you're just gonna do it once. I don't know. Yeah. It, it's it's like Squid Game when they do that shit. <laughs> the flashbacks. <laughs> remember this flashback in, in 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 that show? How many flashes they had to remind you? Remember this. Remember that? Yes, I remember. Thank you. Yes, I remember. Okay. Nazi. I, I watched that show one time, and it went. It, I kind of went in one ear out the other. I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, um, oh well. Well, but um, yeah. Yeah. It was a good first episode. Episode two is also a good episode. Yeah, not as good. I, Pretty good. I th I think it's. I don't think it's my least favorite. No. Because episode four is my least favorite. Four. Wow. Yeah, I would say four is probably my least favorite episode. Mine's seven. But um, I, if 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 four didn't exist, or four if well, four has to exist, but it, okay, so yeah, if four is my least favorite, but my second least favorite is is two. Ooh, I think it's because while two is a good I, again, I don't think. To clarify, I don't think any episode in the show is bad. I don't think this season had a bad episode. But um, that that was the episode I think that got closest. It was a good episode, but it was like, I don't know, something about like the pacing of it, and in particular the last like maybe I think it was like five ten minutes. I don't know. That episode didn't work for me as much as the first episode. Right. But it was still a good episode. Well, it, think, it does uh... it does a lot of good things. It sets up the clickers really well. Um it continues the story well. But it has some things. I don't know. I I just can't it's one of those like unexplained things. Like, I don't know. I just can't really explain why I don't like this episode as much. But no, maybe maybe a little too slow for you. Uh no, no, that episode flew by. I don't think any of the episodes in the show ever felt slow. It's I think it's just one of those like those episodes where it's like, all right, we need this one to really get into the you know, the 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 full swing of the story. This episode two is still kind of set up. I would yeah. say. Yeah. It's not until you get into episode three where you get into the full swing of the show. But that's just how the narrative of the game is, so that I, I can't really fault them for that. I would say the game doesn't really get going until after you leave Boston. Yeah, you're probably right about that. I don't think about it. Yeah, that's probably true. But, um, yeah. Uh, I know you had some thoughts about episode two, because we did talk about that one. Oh, yeah. Uh, I like episode two a lot. I like... <laughs> I like it a lot for how much they. It's very cool how they use Ellie for the one to ask questions about how the infected work, and then you know there's Joel and Tess. Yeah, because she uh, w she the, would she quite literally would not know. Yeah, then there's Joel and, and Tess, the straight up the veterans of this world, who yeah. know as much as they say no. Um, just pointing everything to her. Um, it also it also starts off with uh well. I guess you forgot to mention that episode one ends with uh, Tess and Joel learning that Ellie is is uh is immune. infected. Well, they learn they learn she's infected, well, they but they learn, she's, they learn infected, she's immune yeah. in the second two, uh, second yeah, episode. episode two, you learn she's immune. Yeah, yeah, that's what they learn. Talk about it and ex explain that that she's cargo for and to take, to take her to a hospital down in oh, was it Detroit, uh... Seattle. I think it was no, it wasn't Seattle. 
It just said West. There's all they said was West. Yeah. They never explicitly stated where it was, but it's close yeah. enough to Wyoming. We know that much. Yeah, somewhere there. Uh, yeah, and that that that's basically, yeah, wasn't what wasn't needed to do. Uh, and then they are they they are explaining it. Um, they were a close enough conversation to the game where they're, uh, where Tess is. Uh, uh, Joel is very very pessimistic about the whole thing. Like, yeah, this this shit this shit ain't gonna work. And it, it, with some pretty close dialogue to the game. So, yeah. Hey, fuck you, man. I didn't ask for this. Me neither. So what are we doing here? What if it works, Joel? I can't believe this. Uh, yeah, that was nice. Uh, and then, of course, we get the introduction of the clickers. Very good scene. Very good scene. Definitely my favorite scene of the episode was the introduction to the clickers. Yes. Because <laughs> part of what makes that work so well is the second you get into the museum, right? Mm -hmm. And you start hearing it. And then immediately Joel's like, from here on out, you don't say a word. You don't like, you don't say a word, you don't make a sound. Yeah, you're 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 not you're not you're not quite Yeah, it was immediate like tension off, like yeah, this this is this is big stuff right there. And for you people that careful. don't know, they're just like, Okay, what's going on? But for people like us, the tension was probably even higher for us because we knew what they was was yeah we knew for them. Um and yeah the clicker is so so well realized. Two of them, two of them, both clickers. They they both so well realized. Yeah. It, by the way, save this moment because there are not a lot of zombies in this show. <laughs> no, if you if you were coming into the show expecting The Walking Dead, you showed up to the wrong show. Quite frankly, the Walking Dead. Oh, don't ever accept that shit. Fuck. <laughs> You, you. If you were expecting early seasons of The Walking Dead, yeah, no, you're not. You're not getting that. Yeah, no, they um, were honestly. In fact, they were kind of well, kind of on an afterthought in this. Yeah. It, uh, part of that is that the game has to use them more because it's a game. Yeah, but, but I mean, like you lose, you lose some, you lose something. Yeah. Uh, by by it not being interactive, and therefore. They just don't use a lot of infected at yeah, all, no, you, really. I feel like you could have used more, you know? They were kind of like a pivotal thing of the, the first game, you know? <laughs> I mean, even, you know, even if you had to fight them for, like, even like even the cutscenes that were there. Yeah. Like, they definitely know. could have used the infected more than they actually did. I mean, I, I'll say their usage is, you know, not bad. No. The, the game tended to overcompensate with how many infected they, they threw in the screen, at times even randomly. Yeah. So I'm glad they had some... They they held back a little bit on that, but like still, you could have like that up more. <laughs> Would have been nice, yeah. But especially when yeah. I like, like the action with them. I <laughs> mean, it, this also could be something as simple as budgetary reasons. <laughs> I, budgetary reasons, bro. They they probably got all the money in the world for this shit. Maybe but we saw what that bloater looked like. Yeah, but is that so I cannot say that was. Great effect. Oh, what I don't know. Great. They had they had a dude on set in full costume, but yet it never once looked like a costume. It looked like CG every single time. Every single time they showed it. Yeah, I I think it looked bad though. I, I mean, you could kind of tell, yeah. but you know, I don't know. In a show where like a lot of like the background work that they do and a good portion of the CG is really good, there are some shots that just don't look great. Oh, they couldn't they couldn't CG the the crew. In episode uh, six, good day. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you if you saw, but uh, in episode six, when they're crossing the bridge, there's the, the camera is up in the air with their drone, and up down the the bottom left, you can see the crew just standing there. Oh, that's funny. Uh, uh, in funny. in the same episode, there is a shot. So remember when Ellie pets Shimmer? Yeah, you can see a crew man. You can see a crewmate's hand. <laughs> you, can see, you can see a member of the crew's hand trying to like guide the horse, uh, which is kind of funny. It, yeah. Nothing's ever as bad as Starbucks cup, but no, 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 sir. No, How do you miss that? My God, no. nothing's as bad as a star as a Starbucks cup or 
embarrassing. Uh, I know there was another show that had like just straight up a crew member in the shot. Uh, Book of Boba Fett had a oh yeah yeah Bo- yeah yeah <laughs> yep yeah Book of Boba Fett had I think there was an episode of Mandalorian where you can see a you can see a boom operator in the back. Yeah, which is really funny. And uh, and then just Shazam, you know, clearly in, in the mall with the crew in the background, just not reacting to anything. <laughs> I don't even remember that one from Shazam. Oh, uh, I saw it recently. Not the not the movie. I just saw that thing recently. And then, yeah, that's how you know. But uh. Yeah, clickers. They were they were used very well. Like the the fact like in the game, uh, it's a section where you're fighting. You're in the museum fighting through about like, well, at first it's like two clickers, and then you go on to fight uh, like some more clickers with a few just regular runners. Before you're fighting them in the same room, but it's a bunch of them. Like you gotta run away from the clickers. You also gotta deal with the infected and like some stuff. Section you're, you're fighting. Uh, in here. It's just two of them, and they make that shit like, wow. Two infected is that big of a deal. Im- yeah. Imagine, like, a whole group. Yeah, they made the zombies very draining in this show. Yeah. Like, you like you either run, or you better kill them as quick as you can, or <laughs> good luck, buddy. Um, one thing, uh, the show makes a very big change to the cordyceps. Uh, yes. They are a hive mind. Mm-hmm. There is, like, vines going around. And if you happen to interact with the vine, it triggers connection to every single one of the cordyceps. <laughs> and they will they will chase you. Yeah. So it kind of explains how pe- how the whole was over, you know, overthrown with yeah. uh, how everything works. It, it's a good setup for context. Yeah, they fought. Oh, wait, holy shit, we forgot to talk about how episode two started off with another flashback. Like, in the in the world before everything fell apart. With, uh, 2003, they, they are in, um... Oh, yes, 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 the first... Yeah, where the, are they? The they were, like... Zero, yeah. Yeah, they were, like, in what, in Nepal or something? Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Mm, patient uh, Zero, yeah. Yeah, yeah, how... In there, there there's, uh... A bunch, a bunch of national security guards or whatever come for this uh, woman in the restaurant who's an expert in, in this whole cordyceps stuff, mm-hmm. and then they have her give her own um, her own thoughts yeah. on the whole the whole thing, and then we see one of the pa- one of the patients who uh, was killed, and then the cordyceps was in her, and she 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 got freaked out when she was like looking at, at the tendrils of um mm-hmm. of fungi and whatnot, and then she was like, "Get me the fuck out of here." Uh. And then she's in some room, just some nice fancy room, couch, drinking some tea. Um, and then one of the, the guards mentions, yeah, so she bit uh, about three workers and they, they locked her up. And uh, the other ones are, st- are still at large in the city. What should we do? Do we have a vaccine? There is no vaccine. All right, what should we do? Bomb. Blow it up. Start bombing before it spreads. Yeah. And and she starts her hands start shaking like I'd like to see my family please she starts crying because she she kind of just knows it's it's over so it's, uh, it's yeah. quite something and that made me think oh I like those please have more of those and then never they never do they didn't do it again yeah oh uh, I was really disappointed over that like oh no I really like those give me more yeah. give me more like I really wanted to like to see different outlooks in different parts of the world talking about their experience with the vaccine and whatnot, just stuff like that. It, it was very interesting. And like, ah, I feel like there's a missed opportunity, damn it. It kind of, ah, damn it, disappointed. But like, ah, fine, it's fine, whatever. I'll, t- I'll take those two. I like those two. And, uh, um, yeah. Uh, episode two does have a very controversial scene in it. That being, uh, with that introduction of this new concept of the cordyceps, Tess's death is much different. Oh yeah, Tess Tess gets bitten uh during the whole uh and we still never see it. Oh, we see it in the game, believe it or not. Uh you see. Yeah, yeah, you see it in the game. Uh after you encounter yourself like it, it comes to a point where they're travel going through the museum and um Joel gets separated from Tess and Ellie. Uh Tess and Ellie have to run from infected that are, that are chasing them. Joel has to find a way around them. Uh while well, you look for them Joel, uh, Tess, and Ellie get separated, 
and you help Ellie before she gets, you know, a type of clickers and whatnot, or runners. Uh, and then you find Tess. A a you don't see it. You don't really. You kind of see it, but like a zombie is fighting her on the shoulder, and she whacks it with a with a stick before. Like it's probably like a quick bite, but it, it does get her. Mm -hmm. And she whacks him with a with a stick, killing him. And then Joe's like, "You're okay." He's like, "I'm fine." You're okay. I'm fine. Oh yeah, and then they have. Oh yeah, I, I mixed. I messed it up. So first he finds Tess, and then they go have have to have, have they go have to go help Ellie. Mm -hmm. There, there it is. But yeah, Joel, you you see it just a little glimpse, but you do see it. In the show, you never want to see it. No, you never want to see it. Which is kind of like irk me a little bit. Irk me a little bit because in in the game, clickers are fucking insta kill. If they get you, you're done. That that's how I perceive them. That's how I thought they were gonna be in the show as well. And they're kind of like that in the show, cause episode five we see them messing dudes up. <laughs> we'll talk about that later, but like, yeah, Tess probably got very lucky with one of those clickers who didn't just fucking rip her apart, just mm -hmm. quick bite in the neck and the shoulder. But uh, yeah, Tess Tess does get bitten, and. And they don't tell you how it you find out in the end, but she, she, her attitude changed completely. She's like, "Can you come down, Joel? Jesus Christ! Can we win for once? Fuck's sake!" She's, she's getting very frustrated because she's yeah. realizing her time is up, and she's holding out some hope that this uh vaccine thingy will work, even though she doesn't really have any time left for this. But she's uh, she's trying there. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, and then. Then they uh go to this go through the city some more, and they they end up in um I don't know what that place is called in real life, but <laughs> it's like a big building with a golden little top. It's, it's a very nice looking little, little big white building. Mm -hmm. Uh, they see a, a truck that belongs to the Fireflies. They see that some of them are dead. It leads to them going inside. Tess pulling Ellie with her gun pulled out because you know the whole the whole I'll kill her, <laughs> kill her if you don't. Yeah. So and then and then they see that the fireflies are all dead. Why? One of them was infected. Um, the sick ones, and they said that the sick ones started fighting the, the the um, the healthy ones, and then they basically all got killed. Uh, and then it's around that point that Joel. And Ellie, first Ellie, discovers, find out that Tess is uh, infected. And it goes pretty much like in the game, Joel finding out, wanting wanting her to, sh to uh, show him. And she does, you know. Again, it, go it goes just like the game. She's like, oops, right? No, I like how to run out sometime. Yep. Uh, yeah, and then, and then she starts to plead to Joel to, uh, to start taking, to, to uh, finish it, to to take uh, Ellie to the Fireflies. Um, and once again, we get some... Uh, how do you say? We got an outlook on, on how Tess and Joel feel about each other. Mainly Tess, because she's laying her heart, or her heart out to him, telling him to do this, but perfectly begging him, and saying, you will do this for me. You have to. Uh, and yeah, it works pretty well. Now... Once again, I, I prefer it in the game. It's very cool how Tess is kind of do have her, her last stand against uh, Fedor members rolling up, rolling up to the court. It's a courthouse. There you go. It's a fucking courthouse. I figured, I figured it out. <laughs> but yeah, to, to the courthouse. Having her final, her last stand, and we're dealing with them saying, I will not turn into one of those things. And same, same with that in the, in the show. Instead, in the show, while Tess is telling Joel to uh, go take Ellie to the Fireflies, a an infected wakes up from his slumber. I guess he was sleeping, bro. Uh, and then Joel shoots him. But oh, remember the whole thing about them working as a hive mind? Well, it turns out he was standing on a vine that led straight to a group of piled up infected. Like, and I'm telling, you, they were like piled up. They were like pouring out of the building. Laying on, laying on the, on the ground is is a whole fucking bunch of them. It's like an army, and then they hear it, and then they start fucking running. 
run into the courthouse and then Joe sees Joe sees them from afar says yeah it's it's it's, it's a lot of them we got to go and then Tess gets the idea to uh uh sacrifice herself why because there are a bunch of uh oil barrels around with grenades and whatnot and she's going to blow this shit sky high now some 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 issues um one Joel didn't take any grenades. You know, there was some equipment that he would have taken. Like there, there were AK forty sevens, AR fifteens. There were there were a bunch of weapons though that could probably still be used. You know, just take a grenade or two and whatnot. But no, nah, Joel just scurries out of there with alien hands. Just let's get the fuck out of here. Uh, and, and then, and unlike the game, well, unlike the game, Ellie struggles. She's like, no, no, no I'm not fucking leaving her. Let me call you motherfucker. Uh, in the game, it's more like, really, we're leaving. I can't believe we just left her. Oh my god. Well, Joe's like, gotta fucking move on. Yeah, they they go out. Uh, they go out by the way, in a different way. Um. And uh, Tess pulls out a lighter because it's all the gas on the floor. She's gonna light it all up and then blow it up. But it's a shitty lighter. So uh, she while well, she struggles to uh, get it lit, the the infected. Break into the break the door to the courthouse and start just swarming the building, uh, running past her, and she looks at them like, "Oh shit!" She's she's hyperventilating, like he's terrified. She leans like against a pillar, clicking the ladder still, it's not working, and then an an infected sees her, sees her with sus eyes. You know what I'm saying? The infected was like, "Hey girl, how you doing?" <laughs> and then he walk he walks up to her. Tess sees him, look at each other's eyes, and the the infected gives her a smoosh, a smooch. Yeah, basically kisses her while also infecting her with a uh, with the fungi. Uh interesting about that is that Tess said out loud she did not she does not want to turn into those things. She she were to fucking die and then turn into one of them. So you almost get she basically gets a fear of the possibility of turning. It, like she she's probably taking her mind like oh god I'm gonna turn into one of them I better, and luckily, her her lighter her lighter works and then she blows it all sky high so she uh, did not turn and she killed all of the infected that were rushing them, she she did it, her death was her her death was not in vain. R R I P Tess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's that. Uh, basically Joel's best friend at that time dead yeah he doesn't he doesn't react well he re, he reacts it's more like a he, he doesn't have fucking time to sit there and, and yep nope and take a moment yeah ellie takes a moment though she was like holy shit oh my god yeah it's quite a uh, quite sucky but yeah rip ripped rip tess legend rip tess so yeah, it, you mentioned it was a very controversial scene. Yes, it was. It was a very strange scene. Yeah. Not necessarily bad, but it was pretty like, ooh, this is weird. Look, it, look at him doing it that. It was definitely fuel. weird. It was definitely fucking nightmare fuel. Oh yeah. It reminds me of um, Walking Dead, the comic book, where uh, Crazy Carol sees a uh, woman zombie tied up in the prison because they, they have... um. Zombies tied up for um, like to keep uh people people out the main characters, um and there she is just walking up walking up to her like la, 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 la. she's gone fucking crazy by this point her her man Tyrone cheated on her I I no yeah Tyrone the, her Tyrone and um her I were dating but he hooked up with Michelle and then she saw that and she's like I went crazy she she's nuts by this point she walks up she walks up to the Simo zombie and she says. Hey, what's up? And then gives her a kiss. She kisses her straight up, smooches her. And then, <laughs> and then the walker rips her throat out like, oh, what? You don't like me? Oh. Dice. And then she dies. It was very different, but like, I don't know, it reminded me of, for some reason, the zombies kissing just makes you go, oh, look at that. So there's that. What are your thoughts on this, on this little moment, Gabe? Uh, it happened, and I went, huh? Uh, and then it was aw. very quickly over. 
Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm. You know, I yeah. didn't really have any strong feelings about it. I just went, okay, that's weird. That is weird. I'm so bothered by her not grabbing one of the grenades. <laughs> I know she was scared or not, but like her main goal is to like bottle sky high and she herself threw the grenades on the floor. She, I feel like she would have, you know, grabbed one of them. Especially by the point where her lighter was not working. But out of there, it's, it's a minor, minor, whatever. It still works. Mm -hmm. Ah, and then comes the, episode three. Also, the also controversial episode three. The controversial yeah. episode three if you're a fucking moron. Yes. Or a bigot, I don't know. No, I'm not going to call anyone a bigot so far, you know? <laughs> Some of the people I saw talking shit about episode three, I was just like, okay, just say you don't like gay people. Hey, bigot. They can they can like an episode. They can dislike an episode. Oh, for... you know, they can uh, they can dislike the episode, but yeah. some of the reasons they were spouting. I don't want to name the name of the channel, but I will DM you the name of the channel because you will definitely know what I'm referring to. When I say bigot, you know what I mean. Uh, oh, I don't know. He commented. I didn't know it was him. Oh, he did. He oh, he has a quote that's well, um. That's uh, perfectly ex perfectly well, states how. Well, if it's it, if if it's one of them, then yeah, definitely big bigotry in, yeah. in the works. Yeah. But you know, if someone has issues, I'll hear them out. They'll be wrong, but it's fine because because episode three is goddamn fantastic. It's, it's a great episode. It's a, it's a, it's a it's amazing. fantastic episode. Yes, it's not my favorite, but it's close. It's it's. It's my third or, or second favorite. It it dilly dallies for like. It is. It's so fucking good. It, it if got you me somehow if time. you somehow don't know what episode three is, it is the Bill and Frank episode. It is the Bill and Frank episode. Yes, Frank, gang, gang, gamers. Yeah, yeah. Frank, you guys played. Yeah, probably the biggest change. In yes. to the Last of Us is this the is Frank me. is the Frank character. That is yeah. definitely the biggest change. Well, the biggest change is just Bill's story overall. Like, how yeah, Bill, yeah, Bill's out. over story. Um, I did see some people going, Bill wasn't gay in the game, and I'm like, oh, somebody didn't yes, play the game. Was. Somebody oh didn't play the game. God. Somebody <laughs> actually just didn't play the game. Holy shit, dude! I, I'm sorry. I guess I need to. I, I guess I need to say it out loud. Bill was gay in the game. They just mm. didn't outright say it. No, they did not. They didn't need to. If you they, paid they... attention. To Believe details in the world and things that even a scene that happens later, you will know. Believe it or not, Neil Druckmann trusted the fans' intelligence back then. You know, he thought we he thought we were smarter than that, so he let us figure it up ourselves. There's also people that didn't know that Ellie was gay until the, the Last of Us Part Two E3. Trailer. You know what? That's fair. Not everyone played the Left Behind. Right, but it was one of those like, what do you mean? They just took another female character and made them gay, and I'm like, oh, somebody didn't. Somebody didn't play Left Behind or saw the cutscenes. Somebody actually just didn't know. Um, no, that's uh, yeah. I'll say that's fine. No, not everyone played Left Behind. But it was still one of those like, all right, don't, just don't act like this is a new thing, you know. Well, they could be surprised because uh, you know you could not, be surprised about it, but like to say the, like, this was never a thing. It was like okay, uh, no, it was. You but... just you were just you just are not knowledgeable. Yeah. Like you, you know, not, the, you clearly the... do not know. The main game they didn't tell they even tell us about that, so it's no. yeah. I, I can I can understand people not getting that, but um, but unless they if they play Left Behind and and said, yeah, if they played Left know, Behind and, and still gay. like it's still were like, what do you mean? I'm like, I was like, hold on, you played the game, right? Did yeah, somebody, did someone else just not play it or see the cutscenes? Like, no, I skipped it. I I, I want to play the game. You're weird. Oh, okay, well. Uh, <laughs> well, there but, you go. Uh, there you go. Uh, but yeah, episode three is pretty great. But first, it doesn't even start off with, with uh, Bill and Frank. It starts off with uh, jo uh, Joel and Ellie. Joel and Ellie, yeah, walking the road, walking into um, a Cumberlands. Well, well, actually, hold on. Uh, I, I fucked it up already. It starts off with Joel uh, near a river, skipping rocks, cleaning his, washing his hands. You know, it's just contemplating over what the fuck just happened. Um, then he. he Goes back to uh, not so much the campsite, just where Ellie and just where they are right now, resting up. 
uh, with Ellie. Uh, and Ellie breaks it down, just says, hey, don't fucking blame me. It's not my fault. It's not. You you decided yeah. to do this. You needed a that battery. That scene is, is straight out of the game, no? No, that's not in the or, game. It's right, that's right. There was no acknowledgement. <laughs> there was no uh, acknowledgement about that in the game. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, Joel never blamed Ellie. Because uh, with how I put that in the game, uh, immediately a after they escape uh, the museum and go to the sewers, or like go to the subway, yeah, they they don't they do the uh, like okay, here are the rules. You don't tell anybody about your condition. Yeah, they ever. they yeah they do that, but that's not what that that's not what the show does. No, yeah, that the no, show the, decides to take a moment to you know address it. Yeah, the show does it in the end of episode three. Mm -hmm. Because that's that's at that point that's when you said that's basically when the show takes off. Yeah. That's that's a takeoff with with them with Joe setting off the ground rules and then they leave Bill's uh, town. Yeah, that's uh, that's basically the start the start of it all. Um, but yeah, Ellie is pre being pretty adamant. It's not my fault. Don't blame me. Yeah, nobody's fault. And Joe doesn't say anything because you know he 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 knows she's right. And also, there's a moment. That scene is also great because it shows a moment for Joel to look at Ellie and go, "Okay, she's not just some kid. She, you know, she has she's a little wiser behind beyond her years." Yeah, like there's a moment of respect from Joel to Ellie there. He's like, "Okay, all right, fine," which is pretty interesting because he he uh at this point in on... the game he's not like this with her. No, it takes time. It takes a lot more time. Which I'll say, I don't. The show could have been longer. I'm gonna say it right now. Yeah, and I, I, I think we could have done with one more episode. I'd say like twelve episodes, honestly. I don't know about twelve, but we we could have used at least ten. Because I, I think the show could have had more with it. Joe and Ellie's relationship. Mm. I think it's uh under. Maybe not even necessarily. Not even necessarily like we needed more episodes, but we needed longer episodes. I, I think this this show really would have benefited from like every episode being over an hour. Yeah. I think I think it really would have it really would have um benefited from that. Yeah, it would have had could have had some set pieces from the game too that they uh cut out. I'll get into the one later on, but um, also yeah, it is part of it. Part of this issue is like, again, it's one of those. A lot of Joel and Ellie's relationship was built up through gameplay. Mm -hmm. it, what this show does is it mostly it tries to put it in wherever it can, but uh, it's not. It's obviously not going to beat the game in that regard because the game is longer and has a lot more stretches of time where they can just talk to each other. So, but yeah, I see what you mean. Oh shit! Imagine this thing as a movie. <laughs> God, yeah. If it was God. just like a two-hour, two and a half-hour movie, oh my lord. Jesus, good luck. Yeah, I'm not even gonna try there. Like this was gonna, and this was gonna be a movie. Crazy. Bullet dodged. Uh, but yeah, as you were mentioning, they stumble across a Cumberland Farms where Joel has a stash of old supplies that because he he this isn't the first time going down this road. He when he goes down here to uh, stash, stash of supplies, pick them up and whatnot because he you know he he is he is a uh... fuck. What's that? What's that name? What what's that called? Scavenger. Yeah, no, not a scavenger. Um. Holy shit. Prepper? Nope. Uh holy shit, I can't believe I forgot this fucking name. Oh my god. He he transports stuff and I it'll, it'll come to me and uh, I'll be pissed when it comes to me. <laughs> His illegal job from Fedra is is to transport cargo to another place and whatnot. The name will come to me. Delivery but... driver? Not a lot of driving, but he delivers stuff. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he, he's got supplies stashed there. Uh, so while well, Joe is looking around for the spot the spot where he uh, left the vehicle, I guess he forgot. 
it's been years in, in fairness but like she forgot ellie makes fun of him for like how you fucking forgot stupid idiot weirdo <laughs> doesn't say that but like she meant it uh that's yeah, so ellie goes looking around um she ends up in this in this basement where i guess yeah in this basement that i guess joel didn't know was there uh and luckily in this basement she 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 finds tampons <laughs> lucky like how lucky <laughs> you're very lucky uh and in, in the same place she finds tampons there's this zombie this is infected uh in a pile of rubble and then so this confused me this is this is the one i thought that ellie was a fucking weirdo because you know how in the first episode joel beat that fucking guy to death and, yeah and, and El ellie was like oh Ooh, what's that oh hey. yeah. i like i like that yeah. <laughs> and then and then there she is in the second episode third episode with uh this affected like looking at it cutting him open with a uh, his forehead open and then just i don't know oh, we're a weird little kid do you can you tell me the purpose of that like i don't they were trying to set up Ellie's violent, violent tendencies, nature. yeah, her right. violent nature. Because they wanted to kind of reflect that between Joel and Ellie. Where, like, she has these kind of tendencies, but she hasn't been able to let them out. And Joel being violent kind of awakens that, I guess. Well, I wouldn't say that awakens it. You, you, we, we know what awakens it. We both know what awakens mm. it. Uh... Oh, damn it. Uh, but yeah, you fucking you little weirdo kid, you goony ass little little gorilla. Don't uh, and then yeah, then she fucking kills it gleefully. Yeah. Not gleefully. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Not gleefully. She she just like stabs it. Uh, and yeah, by by the time she comes back, Joel is, has already found the stuff. He uh stashes a uh, rifle that he well a uh a rapid fire rifle that he that he uh got from the federal agent. Fedegar, he beat to death. Poor guy. Yeah, stashes it there. Says, yeah, not a lot, not a lot of ammo for this thing out there. So I'm gonna leave it there for, for later. And Ellie says, well, you know, I could know. I yeah, uh, we forgot to mention that uh, Joel and Tess did not want to get Ellie Ellie gun, and Joel is still mm -hmm. falling through that. Says, nope, no guns. You're, you're, you'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we start learning about. We kind of he start hearing Bill's name at this point. Um, and then. Oh, well. Is Bill nice? But Frank is. Bill's not. Then, yeah. That's true. That's Frank very is true. Nice. But then, it was a little asshole. Pretty much from there on, it is Bill and Frank's story. Uh, well, beforehand. Uh, Joel and Ellie uh, are walking down the road. Uh, Joel is giving her some context on how the outbreak, outbreak started. And as we mentioned, we're more, we talked about pancakes. Well, just a little, little mention of pancakes. Joel said that some of the uh, some of the infection got into the food, like flour, pancake mix, and whatnot. Joel, Joel and Sarah were almost infected if if they had pancakes in our house. <laughs> Imagine that. Huh? Yeah. Uh, and throughout that, Joel, um, he he's we already see he's kind of protective of her already because while they're walking, he says, "All right, we gotta we're gonna cut around." And Ellie asks, "Why?" Oh, there's some stuff in there that I don't, I don't want you to see. So by that, we already know that he's pretty protect protective of her, even if he doesn't really want to be that much. But it's just a uh, a fatherly nature just taking over because he that's how, that's how he is. He's protective of her already. Uh, but Ellie, being who she is, she says, "Man, if you told me it was a fucking axe murderer, you know, <laughs> you should have told me that." And then, yeah, then she stumbles upon a uh, a little a little ditch with a a pile of corpses there. Corpses now skeletons. And uh, yeah, Ellie asks, "What happened to them?" And then Joel says, well, Fedor started running up people outside of the cities and uh, took them to the zones. Well, when they had space. And those who didn't have space? Yeah. And then Ellie asks, why? The, de the deck can get infected. 
skill sets, and then by that point, then we transition over to uh to the meat and potatoes of this episode. Bill and Frank. Bill and Frank. Off to you, Gabe. Um, yeah. Uh, pretty much the episode is just the story of how Bill and Frank met and their eventual love that grew between them, and we see them throughout the twenty years of the of the um of the outbreak or of like the world uh, as its time has passed and their relationship how it changed and a big change from the game bill and frank were happy together mm -hmm. and bill is dead before ellie gets to meet him yeah which is a very yeah. big change from the game yeah in the game and bill and frank hated each other after yeah. After a period of time, yeah. Bill, uh, Frank, Frank, got Frank Bill. hated Bill. Like, uh, it, so you in the game you find Frank's dead body, uh, hanging, and you find his suicide note, where um he you find out he was he he left Frank he left Bill because Bill is how he is, yeah, and he he went off and he went to go find like a place and then he got bit and figured well. Fuck you, and took his own life. Yep. Not, but not before writing a note telling Bill just how much he hated him. Mm -hmm. uh, in the show, very, very different. Very different. Very different. They lived a very happy life together. Uh, still secluded because you know it's Bill, but it's Bill. But yeah, Frank was trying to change that as much as he could, yeah. and because of him, they met a. Uh, uh, Ellie and um, uh, Tess and, and Joel. Tess and Joel, yeah, yeah. Interesting enough, Joel never met uh Frank in the in the game, yeah. No, they never knew each other. Never, they never knew each other. But because of the change of how Bill and Frank work, you know, that's you know they got to meet. Yep. Um. Uh. You know. Oh, go ahead. No, it was uh, yeah, it was a pretty great episode overall. The story was intimate and. Uh, it connects really well to the main themes of the story and re you know reflects Joel in a way. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just a really great it's a really great like establishing of like what Joel is fighting for. What what his purpose in all of doing all of this is. Yes. Cuz I saw a lot of people go like okay well this was just a filler episode what was the point? You know this doesn't advance the story at all and it's like oh some of you are just unable to, unable to read between the lines. And see that this is this is connective tissue. This is literally yeah. establishing what Joel is fighting for. And, you know, also Joel getting all all the weapons and stuff. Like e even that, like small detail is like there. You know, getting the truck and the weapons and whatnot. Yeah, you still need that. I saw somebody say, "Oh, you can just skip episode three. Okay, so you go no. from two to four. Where the fuck did they get the truck? How yeah. did they get into Detroit? Yeah, like, shut up." Yeah. Like, I feel like you could, you could say that more so for seven, honestly. I think you could skip seven a little bit. I mean, it's you important. Can, but... It's a very yeah. important. Very, I wouldn't I say you cannot skip seven. I, I would definitely I, say you can't skip seven. I, I'd i say you can't. It tells us about Ellie. Yeah. But when you really think about it, having it go, like... Because at that point, if you skip seven, it's basically just like the game. Years later, and um, Ellie's taking care of Joel. Well, not years later. No, not years later, sorry. Uh, it's just weeks later. It's basically just like the game at that point. So you, I don't even think you really need um, seven all that much. I, but I it, 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 disagree. It, I guess we'll get into it later on. But... Uh, yeah, at... Episode three is pretty great. Right off the bat, you see uh, this version of, of Bill, how he is a um, very much prepper. an antisocial prepper, very, very much to himself, antisocial, has uh, <laughs> conspiracies and whatnot. Kind of, he saw this shit coming. Oh, no. he, 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 knew, he knew it all along. Uh, and then after, after that, after, after, the, after Federa, the government to take away all the people, he... He's overjoyed. He he gets everything ready. He start putting he start putting his fences up, making his generator, getting all the livestock ready, making the plans, 
all of that, he is fucking ready, making his traps. Uh, and then, you, you, yeah, years pass. Uh, Frank stumbles into one of his uh, safer uh, traps. Thank God he didn't fucking go by the tree shotgun. Oh my God, he would have he would have fucking died. Look at him. Um, yeah, that that's how they meet. They have a very important dinner. I say important because it's uh, it's their first dinner and their last. Or at least at least the way it's happened. That they have a rabbit with a wine when they first meet, and then mm. they have rabbit and wine when On they die day. on their last day. Why? Because Bill Frank. is sick. Frank. Oh, Frank is sick. Frank yeah, sick. Frank. They didn't say specifically Frank. what it was, but I think it was MS. Yeah, that. Um. Yeah, Frank was satisfied. He said, "I don't want to live with this anymore, and I'm fine. It's it's been a good life, not not always good. I've had a lot of fucking bad days with you, Bill. You're you're something else, but it's been the best time of my life. I'll say that." The line that kind of consistently got everybody from Bill was, "I'm all I'm satisfied, I'm all, I'm and satisfied. you were my purpose." Yep. And I'm like, "Oh, fucking right in the heart." Yeah, it's uh, the episode that that got me. I didn't cry because I'm not a pussy, yeah. uh, but it, it made me go like, "Oh, this is oh, this is getting to me." The three times that I saw it, it got me. It's a it's a very good episode. Very good episode. Yeah, it's it. it's very bottle. It's uh it's one of the two episodes of the show that are very bottle. Yeah, bottle I could talk about it for I could talk about it for a long time, but you know we're not we don't have all all night. Yeah. Yeah, it was a it was a fantastic episode. Very necessary and continuing the story forward, and you know, very much um, reestablishing what Joel's purpose is. Yeah, um, and then continuing the narrative forward, and then we get into episode four, my least favorite episode of the season. Thanks. Episode four was just. It's very straightforward. They're in Detroit. There's raiders because the QZ has been taken over. Um, Fedra no longer it's, has control uh, of the, the QZ. It's the Baltimore there. QZ. I thought it was... Uh, is it the Baltimore QZ? Yeah, I think so. This was Detroit. I think. It yeah, it's... Detroit. It, uh... It was Detroit. I, I I think it was Detroit in the game. Uh, I'm looking it up. 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 I could have sworn it was Detroit, but either way, it's QZ where. Yeah, it's um, Baltimore. Is it Baltimore? Yeah. Oh, good job. Uh, if, like, it, if, it. if it's Baltimore in the game, I don't know if it was in the show. But um, either There's way, they go to. You know, a QZ. Uh, we were just trying to pass through, but the QZ has been taken, is no longer occupied by Fedra. It is taken over by Raiders. Or just the people who or were. Just the people, the people yeah, in under, the QZ. Yeah, who were under Fedra's rule. Yeah. Um, but they had enough and they all overdrew them. Yeah. And they're led by this. Rather one. recently, by the way. Yeah, rather recently. Very interestingly, recently. Um. Yeah, I just wasn't particularly much of a fan of this episode. It was a good episode. But I don't know. This one this one was just a precursor to a much better episode. Yeah. It was the uh, necessary setup to get to something much better. Yeah, I, I like the beast that, that this episode had with um with Ellie having her first kill in a pretty great scene where it was not her first kill. Yeah, well, no, not her first kill, as, as she as she mentions, but it, it is the kill that really, really fucking got to her. Yeah, well, because she it's, she shoots. It's the first time she like shoots somebody living. Yeah, yeah, it's it's someone that she didn't know, she was, yeah. that she had to kill. Well, yeah, actually, she didn't even kill him. She really just she she brought in the cause of his death because she'll finish it off. But uh, what got to her was really seeing. Seeing the guy beg for his life, she says, "No, it's done. We're over." And then Joel straight face because he Joel is not happy that she had to do that. 
which another improvement over the game. So. Oh yeah, the I shot the hell out of that guy, huh? Oh. That's and then that. fucking Joel's the, just an asshole about it. Yeah. Oh, you said like I told you so. But really, I didn't, right? I was really, I, ex- I was really expecting immediately in that scene for like Joel to be a dick and have to hear again. No, thank you. How about a thank you? How about a thank you, Joel? Yeah, I'm gonna think I'm a hell of a goddamn kid. You know what? No, I gotta remember the rest. How about hell? You know, it wasn't easy, but it was either him or me. You got anything? You got anything like that for me, Joel? You got anything? You got a thank you for me, Joel? No, anything like that for me, Joel. I remember that part. Uh, And then he says, "Just gotta move on. Lead the way." You know, yeah. in, in the so, show, he immediately, not... he's, 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 he's like, I'm sorry you had to do that. Yeah. Well, you're glad, you're glad I did it, right? He's and then like, Joel says, yeah, I, I, sh- I sh- never should have. Yeah, like, I guess I'm glad you did it, but you shouldn't have been put into that position in the first place. Because this is like mm-hmm. the point where they start actually like exploring. Joel's got a hearing problem. Yeah. He's old. He's an old man. And he can't hear very well. Yeah. No, that sure doesn't fucking sound like fucking shit up. My God. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was a pretty great scene. Also, it, what, what happened there was that they got ambushed just like in the yeah, game. They got, they got ambushed just like exactly like in the game. Yeah, but except they didn't have the he ain't even hurt line, which, oh, yeah. that's, my, that's my favorite line. He ain't even hurt. Um, but yeah, it leads through. Oh, and then we uh switch perspectives with uh the leader of the people, one of the people who um caused the uh insurrection uh for better to be overthrown. Yeah, they took over the QZ. It's led by a lady named Kathleen. There we go, Kathleen. I was gonna, I was trying to remember. <laughs> Thank you, Kathleen. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't really like that character. I like her. I I, I, I like I like Kathleen. Did not care for the character. We had like it for a while. Least, uh, but... What I like about her is that her story is basically the last of us two told better. Though the whole thing of violent of uh the cycle of violence and um the cycle of vengeance consuming you no matter what, even though it's not the right, it's not always the right thing to do. How it will consume you, and and in the end, it will it will not lead to any good. I really like the whole everything they said about that throughout the whole two episodes of four and five. Um, and I think Kathleen was very well thoroughly explained on why she wanted to do this. I like her a lot. I, know, I think it was just um, I, I didn't really once believe. In Kathleen. What do you, what do you, what, what do you mean by that? Uh, I di- I couldn't buy into the character. I think it, I think the problem was the performance. What was uh, around with the performance? Um, it, she just was very soft spoken, and it <clears throat> I it through her performance I couldn't believe that she was able to rally and support, get support like that. I don't know. It, it was, I don't know. The performance didn't help sell the character to me. I mean, it's in the more of a me- measure of actions than what they say or how they sound. Like, you couldn't believe that she did these things because of how she's acted. Yeah. Not despite, not even well, even though what she said, how she <laughs> did some, you know. I just, I didn't get, the, I didn't get the impression from from her, like through her, through her performance. I did not get the impression that she was an inspiring leader. It didn't feel like, like when she was like barking orders and like trying to be inspirational. I was like, okay, I don't really believe this. I don't know, I wasn't sold. But her words didn't do anything for you. No, the the words are the words, but it's depending on how the actor performs them. I wasn't sold on the performance, which therefore did not sell me to the character. Boo!
Oh, well. That's unfortunate. Um, yeah, but part of her her character didn't really fully work for me. Thomas Sessions bully him. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, it didn't really didn't really work out for me. Um, I, I still don't I thought it was a good episode. It's a pretty good episode, but I don't know. It just definitely my least favorite for pacing and what is, uh, I don't know. It, just, it, it wasn't it wasn't really working for me. I don't know. I th I just wasn't as interested in what was going on. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed it with uh this switch of perspectives and uh, um sort of the bureaucracy of of uh some of the uh, of a certain QC that didn't work out so well because of the uh, of the mistreatment from a uh, from Fedra. I, I like um how the Shigo said it was a way to show different sides of, of Fedra, the the cruel and violent one that's unfair and um the ones that that's necessary, the ones that keep the world in order. Very interesting. They didn't they didn't exactly say that Fedra are assholes. They all, they all, they should all fucking die. No. Different perspectives, different views, point of views. I like it. And I like episode four a lot. Uh, and yeah. As, oh, I forgot to mention that uh, one of the guys following Kathleen is uh, Tommy's actor. Jeffrey so, Pierce. Right. Yeah, it was very great, great to see that cameo there. Really liked him. Really liked seeing him there and uh, how he goes out. Very fitting. Respect. This show has some good cameos. Um, and, 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 the big important thing is they keep mentioning Hen uh, Henry, Henry and Sam. Yes. Keep so game game names. fans, you know you know you know what that means. Show fans, I wonder. Yes, you will. And you speaking of them, sure will. No, yeah. Speaking are. of yeah, speaking of them, well, Joel and Ellie go to high ground, going through uh, going through a building because people are looking for them now because the people that they killed uh, are affiliated with affiliated with um. The people who over overthrew the Boston QZ, uh, the the Baltimore QZ. So um, yeah, that that pretty much angered them because they um, Joel well, Joel killed them. Mm -hmm. He fucking stabbed one of them. With us. <laughs> he killed one. He killed the guy that was begging for us with his own knife. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, it's here. It's a good knife. Oh, thank you. I'm gonna kill. Oh, thank you. I'm not gonna whistle bullet on you. <laughs> killed killed his ass. Uh. And yeah, after that, Joel and Ellie are climbing down a a big set of stairs. What was it, fifty six floors? But they stopped at twenty. Uh, yeah, and during like all, yeah, and during all that, Joel uh, Ellie asks, "How do you, how he knew about the uh, the uh, the ambush?" And Joel says, "Like in the game, I've been on both sides." And it, it goes pretty much like in the game, except in delivery, where in the show it's a lot slower with a. Uh, Joel needing to stop to think to think about all of that and and because it's like a moment. It's like so you cut a, so you uh, killed a lot of innocent people. Joel just stops and thinks, and um, he he continues on in the game. It's it's during um it's during gameplay, just walking around collecting stuff, and then it's it's a lot more awkward than than um I, quote unquote emotional in, in the show because. In the game, it was like, so yeah, you uh, killed a lot of innocent people. And Joe, Joe was like, hmm. I'll, take that as, I'll take that as a yes. Yeah, I like both of them, but the show, an improvement from the, an improvement from the show. There you go. Uh, so yeah, because because Joe's an old little fuck, he uh, has to stop uh, around floor twenty, and then at least like, oh, you're you're all, you're a slow man. It's like oh, you little sham, fifty six years old. Now, now you know his age. He's fifty six. Remember it. Yeah. yeah, and then they have to uh they have to rest around the floor. Uh and Joel, being a smart man that he is, puts glass, like breaks some glass, puts it around a barrel, and then starts putting around um the entrance and then the floor. So nobody sneaks up on them so we can so they hear the the glass cracking and then and then they know. Uh and then they, they they are falling asleep. Oh fucking hell! I forgot to mention again that Ellie has the pun book, the book of puns, 
volume two. Uh, in the beginning of the episode, Ellie's telling a lot of puns, kind of annoying Joel, <laughs> but trying to set the mood right, making some terrible jokes. Mm -hmm. And Joel says, "Does he?" Joel has the uh, Tony Stark disappointed look, like the <sighs> classic. So, what's different about the next time she's telling those puns is that Joel is actually laughing at them. Because at that point, he's warmed up a little bit to her. You know, af after having told her that. Because at that point, he's trying to, like, comfort her, comfort her a little. And uh, work somewhat. And at that point, she's, she's back at it and cracking jokes and having, having some fun with Joel before they, they go to sleep. So remember how we said he... So remember how he said he's right, his deaf on his right ear? Well, turns out that... Uh, he turned the wrong way, so he didn't quite hear the uh, crack, cracking glass of Henry and Sam sneaking up and them pointing their guns at them. Oh my god! Yeah, and it ends. Leaves leads right into episode five, which is my favorite one. Mostly Henry and Sam. Yes. Uh, big change from the game. Sam is. Mm hmm Therefore, relies on Henry so much more than he yes. did in the game. Mm hmm Also, Sam's much younger, I think, than he was yeah. in the game. And, and, yeah, he's eight here. Uh, in the game, he was around 12 or 13. He was closer he, to he, Ellie's age. Yeah, he said he was 14, but he was lying because he likes her. <laughs> it was funny how it's done in the game, where where uh, Sam asked Ellie, "Hey, how old are you?" "Uh, 14. And Sam was like, "Huh, Sam?" But yeah, wait, no, hey. yeah, Sam is like, "Huh, you know, for Sam." And then Henry was like, "Oh, so you're 14 now, huh?" <laughs> Sam was like, "I'm close." <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, a little funny thing. Uh, but yeah, yeah, in the in the show, Sam. It's a it's a deaf boy, and it starts off right around the time where the people have overthrown Fedra, like immediately after they're they're fucking they're fucking Fedra up, they're beating their heads with glass, possibly raping one of them in the background. Uh, don't think about it. Uh, and and yeah, so thing with uh with Henry is that he is a rat. He 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 has no loyalty. He he. Rats anyone out for, for supplies, every, anything he needs, and people like him have a reputation. They they're not really, they're not really well respected for obvious reasons. Well, yeah, he's a he's a fetcher rat. Yeah. Well, I just I rat for anyone. They he sells they they sell anyone out. Uh, but mostly for Fedra because Fedra they have they have uh, they have everything. So that will sell anyone out. It was and, much, uh, much more he would read anybody out because of Sam. Mm -hmm, yep. And uh, that's important. Remember it. So yeah, they are Harry and Sam are lucky to have fucking gotten away. And uh, they 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 leave it. They leave the QC and go into this apartment that has a uh, an attic up top. And in this attic, there is. Oh, holy shit. Yeah, Kathleen in episode four uh, talks to this doctor who's important to her because he's the doctor that, that delivered her. And uh, she's asking him what, what the fuck Henry and Sam are. And uh, yeah, that, that doesn't go very well because once, once uh, a, a party comes back to pick up the, the, dead, uh, the dead guys that Joel killed, she comes to the conclusion that uh, they are affiliated with Sam and Henry, and she caps the doctor because fuck you, you didn't tell me anything. But yeah, so this is beforehand. So this doctor is uh, going going out of his way to take care of uh, Henry and Sam, just keep them in the attic until they can find a way out of the city. They have uh, eleven days worth of food, so. During that time, the doctor has to go out and find some food because they're running out, and also find an escape route because they have to leave. They have to fucking leave. Uh, and yeah, 
11 days pass and the doctor is not back. Uh, Henry's worrying. Sam is hungry. So they got to they gotta act quick. So Sam around, around uh, Henry comes to the conclusion that, uh, yeah, the doctor's not coming back. He's he's dead. So, yeah, they have to leave. And around the time that they, that they leave, uh, Joel and Ellie are getting ambushed and crashing into the laundromat. Um, which is right across, which is conveniently right across uh, <laughs> where, where Sam and Henry's buildings are as they are leaving. And Henry sees everything happening. He sees that Joel is very capable. He sees him, sees him taking care of all of them. So he comes to the conclusion that, hey, we could use these people. We could use them for something. So yeah, uh, Sam and Henry follow them throughout the city, avoiding Fedra, uh, avoiding the people. And uh, yeah, they, they reach up the building that where Joel and Ellie are. Uh, and as you saw, they, uh, well, they see the glass, so that's why, that's another reason why Joel didn't hear the glass cracking. Um, and yeah, they maneuver under, under the glass, and as you saw the, the episode 4 end, they, are, they sneak up on Joel and Ellie and point their guns at them while waking them up. Because they were gonna negotiate. How the rest up to you, Eva. Um, yeah. They basically they need to get out of the city. That's that's the goal. They need to get out. Joel and Ellie need to get out. They work together. Yeah. Henry and Henry uh needs Joel and Ellie to get them out of there because well yeah, Joel's capable and he can take care of any threat in the way. Sam, uh in this game, Henry is not at all a fighter. Violent at all. And it, in this game, holy shit, in this show, Henry is not all that capable. He he doesn't fight. He does. He's never fired a gun. He's never gone violent. In the game, Henry's pretty capable. He can fight. He can fuck people up. He, he can shoot. He he he's a badass. And here, not so much. Yeah. Um. Uh. Short. Okay. So the way that Henry knows to get out of the city is partly um, beneath the city. And they go underneath and they find a assumed to be a school where children hid. And it's a place in the game where we know that whoever was there with those kids had to make a very hard choice. Mm-hmm. But the point being, it's a moment for them to kind of relax. And we learn that... Um, the reason why Henry's wanted is because he sold out the brother of Kathleen. Yep. He was the real uh, start uh, starter of the resistance. And, and, the everyone, and, and everyone loved uh, Everyone Kathleen's loved brother. Kathleen's brother. And Henry sold them out to, mm-hmm. for, I believe it was leukemia meds. Yep. And that is why Kathleen wants him dead so bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Joel learns about about learns a lot about uh Henry and you know the whole you and I are not so different <laughs> basically. Uh, oh, excuse me. Excuse. But um. Uh, and during all this time, Ellie and Sam are bonding, mm. having time of their lives. Which is great. Look at innocence to, towards these two kids in the this terrible, terrible world. Um, I sure hope they make it. So, um, from there, they basically get onto this street, last stretch to get out of there. But there happens to be a sniper who sees them and makes a call to um to Kathleen. So she's already on her way. Yep, sniper sequence almost almost uh. Close to the game. There's no enemies waiting for you, and it's also nighttime. Yeah. And uh, Joel gets up to the sniper, and it's just some old dude. Yeah, and just some old dude being chilling. Yeah. Joel kills him. Doesn't want to, but he does it. Yep. Um, from there, Kathleen, you know, attacks. And earlier in episode four, they set up that there was. Basically, a hive of infected underground. Yeah. Um, some havoc is caused, 
and a car crashes into a house. And then as Kathleen gets the jump on, you know, our characters, the car holds in, like, sinks into the ground. It's like a, it's like a big truck, like an armor truck. Yeah. It so it's very heavy. Ground. It sinks into the ground. And... It sinks into the ground because the infected are crawling up. They're probably pulling the truck. Oh, I interrupted you. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, the infected just burst out of there. And we see a bloater for the first and only time. Ah. And, yeah. I am not in love with this scene. But we have discussed this together. But explain it to them. Um, them I was not them. a fan of the classic uh, bad guy has the main character in Reach and doesn't do what they're there to do. Also, Jeffrey Pierce's character was just stood there and let a bloater rip his head off. Yeah, he should have moved. Uh, like he shot yeah. at it, ran out of ammo, and said, "Well, I guess he, I'm he dead. Was, no, he was gonna pull his side his sidearm off. Yeah, but he didn't he was gonna, move. He just yeah, kind of stood. He just kind of stood there. Yeah, definitely should have moved. I mean, thing is, there's also like a lot of infected around, so that's even have that much to move around. Like, he could have moved at least on top of a car, you know, just know. to you know, expand the sequence. But I did not like that. Uh, I didn't like I that. Kathleen was doing her villain monologuing. Hold on, do you mean like before the 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 uh, truck was sank no. down, or afterwards? <laughs> Sorry. I don't mean literal villain monologuing. I mean, like, <clears throat> standing there with the gun in the hand and not doing the thing. So wait, wait, which sequence is the second or the second, the, the, the first time they, they, she stumbles across them? Uh, the second time. Oh, uh, so yeah, that time there wasn't enough time. Yeah. Like, a, like, as she stops them, they turn around and then Ellie immediately spots the cleaver behind her and then, and then she notices and then. That she gets, she gets got. Yeah, it's a, it's it was it wasn't a long period of time. It was very quick. It was still one of those like she found. She's like stop, and she just kind of just like sits there for a bit, says a little bit of a thing, and then the infected shows up. Um, no, it was very quick. Yeah, it was quick, but it was still, it was still enough time for Kathleen to pull a trigger. Uh, I don't. No, I don't. I don't think so. It it was straight up to stop, and then Ellie looks behind her. At that time, she notices, and then boom. I'm not sure there was enough time for her to shoot. Well, because she now, pulled up and said stop. Now she no, has no. the gun pointed. If if beforehand she should have. Just shot them rather than just say stop. Sure. Yeah. But why, but why does she just go stop, and then just kind of stands there? Like why didn't oh. you just shoot at Henry's legs or something? Like actually put some fucking. Tension I mean in the there. the possibility the possibility was for actually hitting are you know very slim because they're running, but I'm more confused on why they even stopped. <laughs> it just stopped. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They kind of just stopped and turned around. Like oh god, was this? Probably shouldn't. But uh. Yeah, the, the, though the time of her having to shoot was she going to stop, there, there wasn't enough time. Ellie noticed and then she got the idea like, oh shit, yep. What kind of bothers me is that it's the clicker, it's the little girl clicker that uh, that Shredder just follows Ellie throughout the whole thing. She doesn't focus on anyone else getting fucked up because there's, yeah, there's screams in the background and she doesn't really care. But uh, yeah. It's not a perfect action sequence, but I really like it. it. Shows a lot of how the infected are really ruthless and how a swarm of them, despite how many guns you may have, will over will overrun you. It's, it's a glimpse on why humanity humanity lost. I like that a lot. Um, there's some there's also some cool stuff happening in in that action set piece with uh Ellie having to crawl crawl on the ground, avoid the infected, having to hide. 
in a truck, and then Joel ha- straight up just panicking up in the roof, yeah. up in the building because he has he has sniper, and he sees he sees the little girl getting in the truck, the little girl cooker getting in the truck because she heard Ellie, and then he's like shooting rapidly trying to distract her in any way he, she can, she can. Uh, then there's Ellie. Ellie straight up just sa- saving uh Sam and Henry while they're under a car. Trying to avoid the the infected from killing them, so yeah, and she did that too because uh, Henry went went out of his way to uh to help her when the when the truck uh crashed in the building, to get her get her out of the way before they before they uh they spotted her. So there's some neat stuff going on there. Yeah, they um they get through that, and we get to. The scene that everyone knows about Sam and Henry. Um, mm-hmm. It's that Sam is unfortunately infected after that yep. sequence. And, you know, he turns and Henry has, Henry shoots and kills his little brother. Yep. Um, detail changed in this version. Um, Ellie tries to save Sam by using some of her own blood on the yeah. wound. Yeah, uh, Sam tells her. Or she figures it out because he's talking about his his biggest fears, and then she got the idea, and then Sam showed her, showed her his leg. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. scene is, is pretty rough. It's uh, it's real heartbreaking. Did you cry? No. No. I see. I get it. But um, you yeah, know the scene is is really tough to watch, uh, and you know it's coming too. Um, I will say the show did that scene I think better than the game did. Yes. No. The, the everything with Sam and Henry and and uh, this episode is better than in the game. Um, also, in the game, as soon as Henry shoots himself, uh, the game cuts to black, just jumps forward in time. Yeah. Uh, in the show, they do not do that. At least in this episode. In episode five, they don't do that. They um, no. instead uh, take a moment for the two characters to be buried and show how that changes both Joel and Ellie. Yeah. That it's not it's not bad in the game. It's a different sort of, sort of delivery, because it does give you time to dwell to dwell on it as you um you know do a very you know go go around the dam and all and all that and they talk about it because what's cool about it is that I imagine George didn't want to talk about it at all afterwards. It, it happened and then they buried them. It's fine and they make they go out of the way to uh to show that Joel doesn't want to talk about it. It it got to him too, but he. Just must keep it as it was, uh, because Ellie rem- reminds uh Joel that uh she forgot to re- to bury uh Sam's toy, she just has has it in her in her bag, and immediately he's like Ellie just let's not, yeah, and yeah, and and the show they they already show that Ellie is pretty motivated to um to go spread the cure to do that because if you can she can save all the sams all the henry's in the world and by that they show how hardened ellie has become from this event and how how much joel is softening softening up he's losing it and that is all showed by episode six which is the tommy episode yay tommy so they the goal is to go to Wyoming, because that's where the signal came from. That uh, last signal that Joel ever got, Tommy. Yep. So yeah, they go to Wyoming, and they are stopped uh, by the people of of the town, Jacksonville. I think it was in Jacksonville, right? Was the name uh, of it? Yeah, Jacksonville. 
Uh, and in that moment, they have a dog that's that's gonna smell uh, if any anyone's infected. Oh, hey, you forgot to mention uh, the uh, the the cool little uh, husband and wife that they meet in the cabin. <laughs> oh yeah, aren't they great? Yeah, they were fine. They were fun. Yeah, they were they were fun. <laughs> you made um, him soup. Yeah, he was nice. Why don't you stop him? The gun was over there. Uh, very funny. Yeah, they asked him for directions onto where they can find uh, a specific town, and jo- Joel does his uh, his uh, interrogation sequence of you better tell them you, you you better tell me where this is, and she better point to where it is. He he doesn't torture them. He just no. asked about putting that gun at them. He he's he's not like that. Uh, yeah, and they were they were funny. Ellie steals one of the rabbits. That little bitch. Wow. Um. Yeah. They get to uh, they they're about to get to Jacksonville, but they're stopped by the people of Jacksonville, um, and they have a dog that smells, you know, all that. They're infected, and Joel is terrified. Um, but luckily, the dog is just friendly to Ellie, so they take him to Jacksonville, and that's where we meet Tommy. Um, it's quite the scene. It's a good scene. Tommy! And then, and then uh, well, we just start learning. We start learning about what uh, Tommy's been up to. And we learn about Jacksonville. And it's just one giant, <laughs> it's just one giant, hey, hey, this is going to be really important in part two. Oh, oh boy, is it. Um, but... <laughs> oh wait, some... we we gotta talk about talk about the scene. How? Oh yeah, I'm getting uh, there. I'm getting there. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> I'm getting there. Um, yeah. We meet Maria and all of their people there, and they start learning about like what's in this place. Uh, first they do eat food. Yeah, and Ellie does not fucking like <laughs> Maria. Just no, does not like Maria at all. I don't like this girl. Make her go away. God, which is very different from the game. But um, we do get a certain cameo from an important character in that scene. Oh. Was he that the scene that I was talking about? No. Okay. But uh, Ellie looks out and sees somebody watching her. She's like, what's wrong with that one? Why are you staring what at What the fuck are you looking at? And I think everybody who played games immediately went, was that Dina? <laughs> Yeah, I knew it immediately. There's, de- there's, was, there's a line of dialogue in part two where Dina says that she saw Ellie with Joel when they first went to Jacksonville. Yeah. So, yeah, that's... Shut that's, up, that's shut up. Dina. That didn't happen. That is 100% uh, Dina. Yeah. Who's older? Look at her. Or maybe Ellie's just short. Ellie is just short. Or she's, maybe she's a pedophile! I'm gonna groom her. I'm gonna groom this child. <laughs> um, but yeah. Then we start taking the tour of Jacksonville. And well, it's a commune. <laughs> yeah, well, Maria's just running how everything the works. The funniest <laughs> line delivery in the entire show. Yeah, everything's uh, everything's independently owned, equally shared. Communism. No, you no, know, it's not like that. No, it's like a that. commune. Or communists. The <laughs> way Tommy just stands there. He goes, Watch. Oh my god. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's such a great reaction. Like, yeah. oh god. Uh. <laughs> great, yeah. I love it. Left. Yes, it was such a good delivery from everyone involved. Yeah, uh, I imagine Ellie just went, "What the fuck is communism? <laughs> What's happening?" But um, they give them a place to stay, and Ellie goes over to visit Maria because Maria invites her over, and that's when Ellie learns of Sarah. Yeah, and Maria starts selling. Ellie's like, "Oh, you don't, you don't really know Joel. You don't know what he's about." 
But uh, yeah, yeah, but she she sticks up for him, you know. She sticks up for him until she happens to you know stumble across Tommy and Joel meeting up together in the night. Yeah, and... the second time they meet up because uh, the first time they meet up, they were at a bar. They were at a bar. Uh, they yeah, it, it did wasn't not like go well. Yeah, but it wasn't as heated as it was in that game. They were about a fucking fight in the game. Yeah. Uh, but we do learn that Maria was pregnant. Which mm-hmm. I don't remember. Was that even in the first game? I don't think that was ever no. in detail. Yeah. No, not even, not even the second game. But it creates a good reason as to why Tommy would be incredibly hesitant to go anywhere. Yeah. And of course, why that would be terrifying to Joel. Yeah, for context, Joel wants Tommy to go because he's younger, faster. He, wants, he knows he, he knows the area. Kelly. Yeah, he he. Joel does Joel doesn't trust himself. He's he's old. He's he's uh he's he's rusty and rough. So he's he trusts Tommy real more. Bad anxiety from the fact that he has that he cares about Ellie now. Yeah, and every time she's put in danger, he just loses it. He just he just can't handle it. Talks about having dreams that. Nightmares that he doesn't remember, but... He's failing in his sleep. Yeah. He just feels nothing afterwards. It's getting to him. This this is this is Pedro Pascal popping off, uh, acting-wise. It's, uh, some great good shit. In that scene, yeah. Mm. Um, but yeah, after this, the wheels to go back to the house where they're staying, and we get the scene. You don't know what loss is. And yeah, that scene was played very, very well. Mm-hmm. It's one of the most like important scenes from the game. It's very well realized. In it, is, it is. It is. It uh, is the first scene they had to audition for for the roles. Gosh, for the game. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a great scene. Very yes. well played out. Um, I think episode six just might be my favorite. Oh, nice. I think it might be. Yeah, it's a great little episode. It's a great episode. But yeah. Uh, they have their little powwow. They kind of let everybody, they let each other know that uh, they are terrified. They're both very scared people. Mm. And, well, they go to bed. And then they get up in the morning. Tommy shows up to take Ellie. But, uh... Joel decides to give Ellie a choice of who she wants to go with, and without hesitation, picks Joel. Yeah. And so they just started to keep getting, keep going west to complete their mission. Adios, little brother. Yeah. Wait, adios, brother. Yeah. They keep going west. They stumble upon a college, where they decide to kind of go looking around to make sure there's oh, no that, that's, no, that's what that's what they need to go. They yeah. need to go there. Yeah. Go there. Yeah, firefighters <laughs> are not there. So, and then and but but they, they, they do are. find out where. Oh, uh, so they do find out where their firefighters are. They had to move out, and they yeah. find out that they're uh, in the hospital over at wherever. Yeah. Where I forgot. But the raiders are there, and they attack, and one of them happens to stab Joel. Yeah. And so this, this is also an improvement from the game. Why is that? Because in the game, they've got the raiders, cool. Uh, but there is a sequence where a raider sneaks up on Joel. Uh, he's fighting him off, and they uh, stumble off the uh, floor, and Joel falls. He falls and gets stabbed on a piece of rubber through like the side of his stomach. And he's oh, he's bleeding, and then he pulls. Oh, Jesus Christ! So I'm just saying, by that point, Joe should be fucking dead. And if not, by the time he pulled himself out, bleeding out, done. He's dead. Done. That that is plot armor maximum. He's, but the game says no. And then this is a fucking slow walking sequence. Of course, you know I love those. What's cool about it is that, uh, there is a sense of. There's something, there's something Joel can do at that point because he's weak. He has to run around. He has to rely on Ellie having to drag, drag him out of there while also fending off the raiders. And there's a point in that sequence where Ellie almost fucking dies. She gets smacked in the head with a pipe and almost dies. And Joel can do nothing, nothing but watch. But Ellie 
does well to uh, fend the guy off by shooting him, just fucking capping him. Um, and yeah, it it's it's a cool sequence. For like, he he should be dead. There's just no way. But yeah, in the show, is shorter. He gets stabbed with a like a like a broken piece of pipe, which he pulls uh, it was out. A baseball bat. Ah, a broken piece of baseball bat. There we go. Which uh, yeah, he pulls out uh, in a sense of panic. I people make criticisms that he shouldn't have pulled it out because of course he's gonna bleed out. But like, if he keeps it in, well, uh, he's riding, gonna the, riding the horse, it's gonna clot. Yeah. Well, yeah. but like you know, if he's sitting while riding the horse, it's gonna do some damage in there, internal damage. So. And then he probably didn't think that when he pulled that out, he was gonna beat out that much. So yeah, nothing. Yeah, there there is really no right choice to make at the, at that moment. Yeah. But um, I have an issue. Why didn't the raiders have guns? I say this because these are the same raiders that are part of a certain group that also have guns. So it doesn't make much sense to me that they wouldn't have guns going so far away from their um their hideout where they probably would need it more. And what I got from that was that if the raiders did have guns, Joe and Eddie would have been dead at that point. They would have gotten they would have gotten them. So that's kind of an issue. But aside from that, it's an improvement. <laughs> so so yeah, Joe and Ellie have to have to ride off. Because the raiders, there was a, the other raiders spotted him after Joel killed that one guy. Oh, that poor guy. Uh, yeah, they have to ride off. Uh, and they're well, they're they're far away, and they're far enough away. And Joel uh, stumbles off the horse. He's passing out, losing blood. Um, and Ellie, she's 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 panicking too because she but she says to him, "I can't fucking do this without you." Well, well about to cry because he's about to die and she's going to end up alone. Her biggest fear, ending up alone. And by that, the episode ends. Yep. And it takes us right into 7. Episode 7. Another controversial episode. The Left Behind episode. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's basically just the flashback explaining Ellie's backstory and how she got infected and her mm -hmm. relationship with Riley. Yep. Um, this was the only other episode written by Neil Druckmann. Pretty good episode. Yeah. I quite liked it. Yeah, but I liked it too. I, I, think it's, it's... It's, I think it's placement is a little odd. Um, it's like it's it's placed where it technically should be, but I feel like it kind of messes up. It's be it being episode seven of nine, kind of throws the pacing of the series off. It is, yeah, because it starts off with uh Ellie having taken Joel to a uh, to some house down in the basement, um, and Joel is telling Ellie to fucking leave him, go to Tommy. He's he's dead, and she goes up to the stairs, and stops for a moment, and starts thinking, and it leads to the flashback mm -hmm. of Ellie's, you know, time back in Boston. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and as we see her, it starts off with her running laps around the gym, wearing her Walkman, kind of slowing uh, the party down because she's not really into it just jogging around and then this bitch called uh bethany yeah this bitch bethany takes the walkman away and it's like hey uh hurry up i'm not gonna run more less because of you i'm not getting in trouble better hurry up it's like okay give, give it back i don't want to fight about this oh you didn't do the fighting your friend did riley did she just ran away and that pissed her off and then she fucked bethany up made her get 16 stitches oh the guy was a black guy Lucky her. Uh, and yeah, she got in trouble, quote unquote. Uh, ended up in um the office of uh, something Quan. He's uh he's a higher up a captain something. Oh yeah, Captain Quan. I think his name was Captain Quan. Uh, he goes pretty easy on her because he he gives her choices, ultimatums. You know, just. 
Here's some keys. You can pick this side, and you can be higher up a captain. You can get your own room, better meals, and then boss anyone you fucking want around. Or you can have the choice where you work at you work at sh shit job, shit shifts. Uh, yeah, just work working like the worst of the worst jobs in um in Fedra, which by the way are necessary jobs. We we salute you people who who have to clean the sewers up, who have to watch the sewers. Thank thank you. We we love you. In the apocalypse, we we're with her for you. But yeah, it gives us a choice because because Quan sees Ellie as a leader, someone capable, some someone who can take the 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 step for the next generation and lead them into a better world. Because he he gives his respect on Fedra because Fedra at that point are are, are keeping things tight. They're keeping civilization from, from, from falling apart, even as some people may not believe it. And Ellie agrees. Crazy enough. Uh, and yeah, she picks the the best choice, the good choice, the one where she's in charge. <laughs> and and I like how it goes. How it goes where she's like, "That's it. Yep, that's it. Just just work, just work on it." She gets up to leave, and then turns around and goes, "Can I have my Walkman back?" Quan looks at her like. Fucking serious, but he gives it to her anyway. Just fine. Lucky her. Wonder what happened to the Walkman. Gotta wonder, right? Yeah, don't know. Uh, and then afterwards, it's her in her room, and it pretty much starts like Left Behind did, with a uh, Ellie in her room and Riley sneaking up on her, making a little prankster joke, and yeah, Ellie kicks her off like you fucking bitch. Uh, oh, it's just your Riley. You stupid idiot! I would, I could, I could have killed you, stabbed you. Yeah, Riley says, "I appreciate your, your uh, mercy." So, I haven't played Left Behind that much, so uh, this is the part where I'm rusty at, and, and when it when it comes to comparisons, but I, I'll I'll do my best to uh do comparisons and whatnot. But uh, yeah, Riley disappeared from from the Federal home because. Yeah, she she disappeared, and uh, Ellie's kind of really mad at her for not telling her anything about that, and she's not exactly happy with her the revert for coming back. Out of out of surprise, like that, and um, Riley says, "Uh, come on." She, oh, she says, "All right, there's something something we can do. I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna say something. You're gonna say no, and you're gonna say yes, and then she offers her that." Offers her the whole spend the night the night time with her, to have to have the greatest night, night of her life. Ellie says no, of course. But then Riley convinces her, uh, and then they go off. They go off. They 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 fucking they fucking do it. They they leave. Go through the city, jump through buildings, and uh, they're talking. They're talking about their perspectives. Why uh, Riley left because she. Uh, Got recruited by the Fireflies, and we'll get into reasons why later on. <laughs> Much to Ellie's surprise. Uh, during all that, they uh, stumble on some dead guy who fucking drugged himself out, dead. He... I think those are the same. By the way, I think those are the same pills that uh, Joel gave that Fedra guy. Probably. Yeah. He, my man OD'd. Also, uh, they they took yeah. The guy had a bottle of like whiskey next to him, and when I grabbed it and drank it, I, and when I grabbed it and drank it afterwards, I thought I wouldn't drink that. <laughs> That's gross. The you saw that guy's mouth, right? He probably drank that that thing with with his mouth that dirty. That's gross. You're gonna get it. You're gonna get AIDS. They probably did. Uh, but yeah, they they drink the bottle because they're stupid teens. Yeah, Riley's almost seventeen in this, in this, by the way. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah, then they uh, yeah, then Riley basically tells her where they're gonna go because they are on top of the of a building that gives them view of the mall, a mall that is apparently full of infected, but also not, but is sealed off, but is also not sealed off. What? Yeah, that didn't make any sense to me. 
but uh yeah then they then they go into the uh, into the mall riley surprises ellie by make telling her letting her know that yeah there's power yeah she she makes her go on a little on a little wild goose chase where she's going through some halls and and then going in inside the mall and then she flicks the lights on and she blows ellie's socks off and that's how that's how they're gonna spend the night having fun at the mall so you can explore all the wonders of the mall all the wonders of the mall so i have issues riley says that well ellie ellie makes wonder wonders hey uh the lights what about all the power riley says it's fine feather's not gonna notice it's like an underground bunker. That's a stretch. And the, and afterwards, the part where she says uh, the, about the power going off here, how they're not going to notice. What do you mean they're not going to notice? One of their generators are now flicking power somewhere else that is not supposed to happen. They're going to notice. It is a stretch that you're telling me that they're not, not going to notice. They're going to. They should notice. I don't buy that they wouldn't notice. But yeah, that sleep thing apart, they uh, they have fun at the mall. I'll give it off to you, Gabe. What do they do in the mall? Well, the first big wonder of the mall is the carousel. Um, wait, wasn't it the escalator? No, <laughs> a, a prompt, a prompt jo- to a, jokingly, a, a, yeah, it was yeah, jokingly. It, yeah, it, it was a it was a prompt to wander off the mall that Ellie because she was impressed. Escalators are pretty cool. Important bits are. Um, the carousel, because that's where you kind of learn. Um, yeah, I forget where you learn about rap. I'm not gonna lie, I saw this episode when I was like deathly ill. <laughs> so if th- this episode was kind of a blur, I'm not gonna lie. I do not wow. remember much of it. Well, damn, you like us so much though. It's a good episode. Um, but I don't remember it. I forget what, what conversation they have on the carousel, but I remember it has something to do with Riley and her relationship with fire with the Fireflies. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because they saw her as someone not too worth um, doing, you know, big stuff. That's how they saw her. My problem with that is that it's still stuff that you need to do. Like, Riley, someone has to do it. And you're disappointed that, that they saw you as that? Well, shit, man. I don't know. <laughs> do better. Do good. But even, even with that, you're getting it pretty easy. To, like, us outside of everyone else, like, compare yourself to anyone else outside of Fedra, you're, you're getting it good. Standing, like, standing watch while they do sewage cleanup, like, uh, someone has to do it, Riley. Sorry. If you're one of them, you're one of them. Yeah, I just didn't buy that. That's like ultimately a bad thing for her. You're still doing something. Yeah. Um, after the carousel is the arcade, right? Uh, the, I did the carousel. I think it's the uh, the pictures. They they take selfies. Oh yes, pictures. Yeah, I don't even think I've been in one of those picture machines in a long time, so. Yeah. I and they're see shitty. Those anyway. Yeah, they are shitty. Um, yeah, do that. And then they go to the arcade where they play Mortal Kombat 2. Yeah, not not like in the game. In the game, um, the arcade machine didn't work, and it wasn't Mortal Kombat. It was like some made-up game. Yeah. Angel, Angel. yeah, because, you know, they couldn't get the rights to it, of course. When you, but when you got... Sony and Warner Brothers money in the same production. You can you can afford a Mortal Kombat cap. Oh, we we good. We good. We got this shit. You, uh, you can yeah. take that Mortal Kombat cap now. Yeah. So yeah, basically the Mortal Kombat in the game. It's uh Riley having to describe uh make make scenes in her head up where she's mm-hmm. pressing the buttons in the machines, but also imagining the scene in her head on, on what she's doing. But in the show, yeah, they're playing Mortal Kombat. Mm-hmm. Oh, I guess we should have mentioned that in episode three, uh, Ellie sees a Mortal Kombat arcade machine oh. in uh, in the Cumberlands. 
Also, which is just saying, bullshit, <laughs> you'll never find an arcade machine in the fucking Cumberlands. <laughs> I mean, Cumberlands? In a gas maybe, station? You know, Cumberlands? I don't know. Maybe no. in the early 2000s. I don't know. Maybe. I don't remember Help. much of those times, nor do I remember Help. going to any Cumberlands back in that time, so yeah. I don't oh, yeah. know. But it's, it's like a gas station, right? Cumberlands? Well, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a gas station convenience store, so... Yeah, you're not, yeah fucking bullshit. Full bullshit. Yeah, get, out, get out of here. It's probably not going to be an arcade cabinet in there, but no, uh, sure, whatever. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but yeah, that's how you like Mortal Kombat Connection, Mortal Kombat 2. Oh, this is a poster of it on Ellie's wall in the Federal House. Yeah. In her door. She's, yeah, she's the biggest Mortal Kombat fan ever. I mean, um, they play Mortal Kombat, and as they're playing, there is an infected in the very back. Just yeah. being chilling. He's being chilling. Um, yeah. Uh, after that, uh, after that, Riley goes to give her her present, which is the the joke book, the pun book. But mm-hmm. Ellie sees that Riley's been making pipe bombs. Yeah. Also been also been sleeping there. Yeah. Which isn't what pisses her off because she finds, she finds it kind of cool that Riley has just been chilling here. But it's the pipe bombs that get, that get her. Um, which then makes Riley confess that they have been planning to do stuff, and that is the only reason why Riley is currently in the Boston QZ. Mm-hmm. Uh, which makes Ellie incredibly upset. She starts off, and then it's like, I can't leave it like that. So she goes back, hears screaming. It's just a sound effect. She goes into the Halloween store, and there's Riley. They kind of talk. Ellie, Ellie apologizes, and then they do the last wonder of the mall, which is putting on stupid Halloween hats, playing some music, and dancing together. Dancing. Uh, it grows. It grows really intimate as Ellie has her first kiss. Yeah, with Riley. Uh, yeah, to mention, there's been teases. There's been pretty teases of her. Uh, Wanting to send something to Riley because she has a crush on her, as you can see, in pretty early on. Yep. Um. Yeah, and but, yeah, because because now she knows that Riley's leaving. She really wants to stay. So then, yeah, she stops for a second, looks at Riley, and then she says, "Don't go." And just like in the game, they kiss. Yeah, and that pretty much convinces uh, Riley to 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 not to not go. Yeah, they're gonna stay. Uh, they're gonna work, course, they're gonna work it out. And of course, because stories, uh, that's when the infected shows up. Yes. And yes. Bites attacks and bites both Ellie and Riley. Yep. And as they kind of are essentially awaiting their impending doom. Um. That's when they flash back forward to Ellie yep. in the house with Joel. She finds um, some some needle and thread and starts sewing Joel up. Stitching him up. Yeah, stitching him up. And that's where the episode ends. Yeah. She's going to fight to stay with him as long as she can. Just like she, doesn't said, wanna lose, gonna... she doesn't want to lose anyone. They're gonna wait it out. They're gonna fight for it. They're not gonna take the easy way out. They're gonna they're gonna go through it as long as she can hold on to him. A uh, good episode. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of what the episode tells us about about Ellie, but I don't think I don't think they said much about Riley. I think Riley was kind of disappointing. Uh, the actress the actress was really good. Yeah. Uh, she acted her ass off. She was fucking crying during during the end. She, she did a really good job. I want I want to see her in more stuff. Uh, like she's this. been in quite a bit of stuff. Yeah, just not, not 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 that I've seen her in, but uh, yeah, she was really good. I just Riley just didn't do it for me. Her writing her writing was kind of weak. Yeah. But uh, I also have issues with uh, the infected attacking them. Uh, it's not perfect in the game either because they're making a lot of a lot of noise in in the mall, of course, with the music and everything. Uh, so the infected are bound to pop up, and they do. And it's like a fucking bunch of them popping up almost randomly at a point, and they're 
giving chase to them. But what's better in the game is that after they escaped them, a, one of them gets to them and, and ambushes them out of nowhere. Like, they, they don't even look. They can't look. And gets them, bites them. Uh, the problem in the show is that they're ready for it, and Riley has a gun. Shoots them. Mm-hmm. Gets them down, but then she runs away, doesn't shoot them again. So, like, how it was done is kind of like, it's kind of like her own fault for, like, fucking up. She was like a scream character when, when the ghost face goes down and she doesn't fucking beat him up. Mm-hmm. Doesn't capitalize. What are you doing? Get him! So yeah, the, the way how I was in the show was kind of lame. Not very well done. I don't, they were, I think, kind of dumb. But uh, the aftermath of, it, of them reacting to it was pretty good. At, at least smashing up uh, everything, getting her anger out. Uh, it was good. Very emotional. Pretty good episode. Yeah, um, that takes us right into episode eight. Uh, but I, I guess I want to say on why you really could skim by this episode, because just like Left Behind, you don't you don't have to put Left Behind to understand the Last of Us, uh, one you, you know the whole the whole game by itself. To me, Left Behind, the episode is kind of like it tells you a lot about Ellie, sure, but not not much about Riley. And with the way you could format. You could go from episode six straight up to episode eight, just like the show does, where Joe passes out and then escapes weeks ahead to Ellie hunting. You could do that right in the show. I'd say so. I would say you could also still watch episode seven because it is a pretty good episode by itself. It's enjoyable. But to anyone that says you could skip it, I, I'm going to have to agree with them to a point. Even if you might miss something about Ellie that you, I guess, wouldn't have figured out uh, beforehand or afterhand. Because just, just, just at the last of us, uh, in the ending, Ellie says what, something, something that, that drove her into, doing, into taking care of Joel. That's pretty much said in the show too. Mm-hmm. So, what was said in the sh- in the game could have been said in the show, and you didn't have to watch episode seven, and you would have gotten the point still. I just feel like it's necessary for Ellie's character because it shows you her predicament and why she chooses to keep going. Yeah, it does. So I feel like that's a pretty important aspect of her character that. If you skip it, you lose. No, but no. Once again, like I said, the game does that already by itself. You don't need left behind. But the and... game also works very singularly. Um, the show has this here, and I would say it's better for it. But I'm basing off the line that she said in the end of the game on what Riley said that that really sucked to her. Because at that point you understood a lot about Ellie, and if you if you like cut episode seven and keep going, I think I think you'll get it. I feel like episode seven really just enforces it on you, just like Left Behind did. Um, fair. I guess more agree to disagree here then. But yeah, Left um, Behind it was pretty good. My least favorite, but pretty good. And that takes it us into eight. Episode say episode eight, another favorite. Another pretty good episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the David episode. Um, I was very scared for this episode because it. Th- this is the this is the storyline that cements like a hundred percent cements the relationship between Joel and Ellie. So I was very scared that if they messed this up, it was going to be all for nothing. Um, and they did not. What would you have been afraid of that they would mess up? Hmm? What would you be afraid for them of messing up in the episode? The I got you, baby girl. Ah. Like if they, if they didn't say it? <laughs> No, it's not if they didn't say it. It's if that moment wasn't sold. 
If that mm -hmm. wasn't sold, if you didn't feel it in that moment, the show failed. Well, some out there probably didn't feel it. Hmm? Some out there probably didn't feel it. And that's perfectly fine. The show failed. I don't think the show, I think the show did it pretty well. Yeah, it did pretty good. Um, I don't really have a lot to say about this episode. It's just a pretty good episode. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I think David was sold really well. I think he was creepier in the game, but he's still very creepy in the show. I feel show. like he was, in the show, I feel like he was a lot more overt <laughs> into yeah. his intentions. Uh, the actor, I don't know. He looks creepy by himself. I don't. Yeah, yeah doesn't have to do much. I mean, yeah, I don't want to like insult him or anything like that. <laughs> like he, he's got he's got this bug eyed impression, wide eyed bug eyed impression that yeah. like kind of creeps me out. Um, I uh, like that that we got to spend time with his, I guess, village. I don't know. Yeah, his community. His community. Uh, there's that's Troy right there. He's uh, he's he's like a second in command, Troy Baker. Yeah. In a very James. In a very thankless role for Troy. Yeah. As he deserves. My God. Joe's actor is just... I don't know. <laughs> I, I just recently heard what he said about David. Uh, what is it? He said what? that um, David, David did nothing wrong. Huh? Really? Uh, David is a... Is very similar to Joel. Oh, yeah. That was a while back. I didn't tell you... I tell you about this? No. Oh well, yeah, I heard that a while back. He Troy was fucking stupid for saying that. Yeah, um, s somebody the, needs to stop letting Troy speak. The stupidest thing that he could have said. Uh, I don't know why he said that. Jesus. Uh, honestly, <coughs> you know, I didn't even know he. I didn't even know that he said Troy David did, not, did nothing wrong. But I know he said that David and Joe are like like. Oh. He basically, like, I guess, like, basically, without saying, like, without like saying it verbatim, he basically said that David didn't do anything wrong. Uh, and I'm like, oh boy, oh boy, Troy, please stop talking. Oh, yeah. Um, am I wrong for remembering it not being a meat cleaver? That yeah, it was a um, machete. It was a machete, right? Okay, I wasn't crazy. If you're not crazy, you're right. Uh, there's some interesting stuff in this, interesting stuff in this episode. It, this episode, I feel like goes like pretty close to the game, mm -hmm. like the closest, the closest out of all of them, probably. Uh, except they show some more stuff with the community and whatnot. But interesting scene where you know he's Dave is like a pastor in in this uh mm -hmm. in this version. He found God because of the apocalypse, uh, and the community is behind them, but not for long. They are turning on him. You can tell something happened that drove David off the edge, and the community is slowly losing trust in him. With him slapping that little girl, oh boy. Uh, and here's something. Here's something you might not have noticed that the show didn't say specifically. But um, remember the scene where David arrives. In, in the room where they're all eat, all eating human human meat, they're yeah. they're eating that little girl's father, the the guy that Joe killed after he stabbed him. That's that's the little girl's father. <laughs> they're eating him. How do you figure that? Uh, how to figure that? Uh, well, in the beginning they're talking about burying him. David says, "Yeah, we can't bury him. It's too cold." And of course, by that point, we already know we already know that they are cannibals. To, to an extent, um, and it would really just make a lot of sense that they're eating eating him. You know. Uh, so um, are you I inferring, that... or is this based on? No, I think they do a lot to uh, tell us that it's him. I'd have to pull back and remember most of it for like, yeah. I, I basically got it when he said the ground is too cold to dig to bury him. 
That doesn't make that doesn't make much sense, David. I don't I don't, I don't buy that, sir. Hmm. But uh, but yeah, um, that deer that uh that they got. They got they they got that deer by daytime. It's nighttime by the time they arrive, and we and we know that they don't travel, that they can that it's it's much um. It takes it takes a shorter time to arrive. They they could arrive by daytime. Mm-hmm. So what got to me was that it's nighttime by the time they arrive. So yeah, and David has has his own ser- plate served a big a big plate compared to everyone else. David's eating eating a piece of the, a piece of that deer. Mm-hmm. The rest of them are eating human meat. Fucking scumbag. Um. Uh. Yeah, he David is a son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, he's he is all sorts of fucked up. Yep. Oh, I, I guess a uh, cool little detail about the uh, his community also turning on him was um, when they wanted to kill Ellie after James shot Ellie's horse, knocked her off, knocked her out. They're they're about to kill her. Um, no, why is that? Maybe revenge, because, but maybe because they know. They know David, so they probably know what David will do to her. Because what's to say he hasn't done it before? What's to say he's not doing with that little girl right there? Without without you treating her in front of without you treating her in front of in front of everybody, slapped her around. He's mm-hmm. probably done more than we than we think. Yeah. So at that point, they probably have like a an indication that yeah, we we're probably sparing this girl. But at that point, yeah. Um, uh, and, and yeah, of course we get uh, the, the iconic Joel uh, torture scene. It's great. I love it. Also, there's an improvement from the game where in the game, Joel just kind of gets jumped by those two and he magically beats them up. <laughs> like, plot armor all up. But yeah. Joel sets it up. Joel sets a guy up, traps him, and then knocks the other guy out when he's distracted. And it's the place out in the game. It's great. Uh, Amazing. People, people were joking about the what town line. Because Pedro screams it. Because he's supposed to be like very uh, hurt. But in that moment, he screams that like he's the most healthy man on the planet. Is that what it came across as? I'm screaming what town. He... Yeah, it's just a. Uh, it's like, why did he scream that line in particular? Because in the game, he doesn't scream that. He says it pretty calmly. Well, yeah. I mean, the, the, he doesn't say what town in the game. It's just where they pointed. I think he does say what town. I saw the scene from the game too, and I think he does say what town, but he doesn't say it. He doesn't yell at all. Uh, maybe. I mean, oddly enough, he was acting a lot more healthier in the game than he was in the in the show. Because of course, gameplay, he has to yeah. be. Yeah, he has to be. Uh, uh, detail, and people were having fun with the fact that he screams "What town?" And then the same episode, you get the tell them Ellie's the little girl that broke your fucking finger. Yes, I couldn't uh, tell you which is better. Can I tell you this time? You know what I can tell you is better? Mm. Remember in the game when David crawls up on Ellie and Ellie starts, you know, kind of screaming. Yeah, I like I like um, him when they fight. In the show, the scream yeah. that Ellie makes when David gets on top of her was terrifying. Like, that was the most, like, realistic scream, I think, I've heard in this show. Terrified for her life. 
not just her life, but you know, well, what he's what he's gonna do to her. What he's ah, gonna do to her. I don't know if that is particularly better because I think they're both doing very different things. Where, uh, in the game, Ellie is holding everything back, trying trying to crawl to the machete so she can get him, and then when she hits him, she lets all of it out. But uh, and then the show, she's just. Uh, yeah, at least letting out her emotions out, letting letting them be shown. I think they're bring, doing very different things, but I think they're both as effective as they, as they can be. I would say it was better because it sells the, the fear of that scene much more. I guess so. Because um, it adds that layer of, like, uh, this, this grown-ass man is on top of this 14-year-old child and is looking to do an unspeakable act and that fear well i uh how she showed that fear was terrifying yeah well david's overtness in um in the show kind of like when we go oh yeah i i, I get i get what you're doing <laughs> and like he, when he said like i'm gonna fight <laughs> yeah it's creepy but in the game he he's bringing up the idea of what he might do to her by saying do you have any idea what i'm fucking capable of because he's he's making her guess. Yeah, I think they both do it pretty well. Um, now, as as to what I prefer, I prefer in the game, where at that point where she's driving them and shitting in in his head, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until he fucking dies, and even and still going it, mangling him, and not stopping. I prefer the part where Joel stops her because I never believed that she was going to ever stop. She was just gonna keep going, and going, and going until she got until she got tired. Yeah, Joel stopping her is Joel bringing her back. I like that a lot. In the show, she just stops at a point, which is you know fine, but personally, I prefer how the game did it. He stops and then in the show, she stops and then walks out of the out of the restaurant before he gets set on fire. And uh, yeah, Joel spots her and, and says, Ellie, Ellie, Ellie. I just like that um, when she walks out and That's Joel there. approaches her, she's still like she's still terrified. Of course, of course she would be. Like it takes her a, a bit before she realizes it's Joel, and as soon as she does, she just gives him the biggest hug. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much the point where I was like, okay, they they got it. They did it. Um, I, I do understand what you mean. They probably should have had more time together. Yeah. But I still think that moment worked. Yeah, it worked. And that's pretty much the end of the episode. Yeah, uh, although, oddly enough, it was so odd how they were walking straight into a lake. Yeah. <laughs> did you notice that? I did not. They, were, they, were, they, were, they weren't, like, turning. They were just walking into the lake. And it, and it, and it ended. Yeah. I, just, I just imagine them walking on water. Yeah. That takes us into the finale. Um, yes, it does. The shortest episode of the season, forty-two wow. minutes. But in their defense, what they need to do in the finale is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. They just need to get to the hospital. They need to explain what's going on with Ellie. But the game and did then, it better on how they got there. I don't remember. But... Oh well, I can tell you later. Uh, well, soon, soon, soon when it when it when it appears. But um, yeah, you go ahead. Um, yeah, Ellie's not doing well. <laughs> no, not doing well. Realistically, Joel's trying to be kind of more upbeat. It's not really working. Yeah, I'm trying to get her back. They get to wherever, the, whatever city they're fucking in. They're climbing around. 
Ellie notices something, and it's the giraffe. I, which I didn't know they were. I didn't know if they were going to do the giraffe scene, but they did it. I knew they were. Even if they were, and they were, they're evil. They're evil bastards. Uh, yeah. Great scene. Uh, leads into the moment where it feels like we can go back. You know, we don't have to do this. We don't have to do this. At least, like, no, we have to do this. I think I, I, I think you can quote it. After everything that's happened, everything I've done, it can't be for nothing. Yeah. So, great little line. Great, Both in the game scene. and the show. Yep. Both in the game and the show. Yeah. Uh, and then we get to the best scene of the episode where there they are walking around one of those uh, little quarantine places. Mm -hmm. Uh, where Joe explains how everything worked. They were trying to bring people in uh, into these tents, check them out for infections. Um, they don't work out. They don't, they don't work out so well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It. It. it it's. It, they mentioned how it was the second day of everything, um, and then where, where Joel almost uh got shot. Where he shot a guy who who missed, and then. Yeah, something something we talked about uh, in episode three, where Joel shot a guy, got shot him back. He missed the other guy missed. Well, and he was raced, that guy. Raced him. Yeah, and then Joel says, "I was to the guy." Joel did not see the point anymore after losing nope. Sarah. Yep, I wasn't scared. I was ready, but, but he still I flinched. Bigger, I just flinched. And I don't know why. Yeah, it was a great scene again. <laughs> Very good. Holy scene. shit! Yep. Um, and then they get oh, ambushed yeah, by it, fireflies. Wait, I was gonna say it's so great that Joe's admitting now. I see the point now. It was you? Yeah. Well, it doesn't say it's you, but he, he she gets it, and yeah. it's like, oh, well, I'm glad. Like she's also getting choked up because finding out that she means something to him really gets to her. Like, oh man. And yeah, they get get ambushed by fireflies. Uh. And then when Joel comes to, he's there with uh, right. Arlene in the hospital. All right, now I can talk about it. So, this scene where the fireflies ambush them is fucking stupid. I'll tell you why. So, you're telling me that these fireflies uh, go around and they just throw flashbangs at, at anybody they see, just two people, instead of instead of the, the good old, hey, stop there, drop your weapons, hands, hands in the air, who are you? You know, asking who the fuck they are. Like, were they were they not were they not expecting Joe Elliot to come around? Did Marlene not tell them anything? Uh, what? Marlene does say that they were not. They did not know who Joel was. No, no, I understand that. But did they not know that people were coming? You know what I'm saying, like th them, Joel or Ellie, they did not. They didn't have to know who he is to know that someone's coming or not. But Apparently even still, they had no way to know when they would be going, when they would be there. Yeah, they had no way of knowing, of course. But like, damn, they take some great precautions. Like, <laughs> they throw the flashbang, and then they they grab Ellie. Mm -hmm. They don't knock her out, but then they they knock out the guy who's already in, like down on the ground, down for the count, not not able to be a threat at all. But they knock him out in the back of the head, like boom. The fireflies do suck. Yeah, the fireflies fucking suck. So let me tell you where the game did it better. So in the game, it leads it leads to uh, them going uh, underground and like like tunnels for, for cars and whatnot. You know, flooded tunnels. They they're going around some pretty uh, not so sturdy uh, cars, floating in the water, like stuck stuck in in certain portions of of the broken up ground, fucked up ground. Uh, they're going around, but. It goes wrong. Joel falls in a truck that's flooding with water. Uh, it's it's a it's a set piece. It's a great set piece where Joel has to find a way to crawl out of there while at the same time Ellie is going around trying to find a way to get him out of there. Uh, but by the time they do, they both fall in there and are being taken by the by the uh, by the flow of the water uh, and. Ellie drowns, basically. But Joe pulls her out, 
um, and he ends up, and where he pulls her out, it's uh, where the flyer fires are. A a two like guards posted there, who's who uh, walk up to them, see them. Uh, Joe is giving her CPR, trying to get her CPR, trying to get her back on. The fireflies are are, are the fucking asses who just knock them out. They're like, stop right there, hands in the air. Joe's not listening because he's worried about Ellie. He has to help her out, and then of course when Joe doesn't comply, then then they knock him out. Boom. By the way, by that point, Ellie is also unconscious in there, in the game, not in the show. Uh-oh. Uh, but yeah, the, the game did it better. Mr. Fire team was idiotic. Yeah. But yeah, she worked with the hospital. They're at the hospital. Um, Marlene tells them that she's gonna go under. She's gonna go under for a surgery. They did believe that the cordyceps virus um, can be cured by taking the immunity back from her, and developing it. The word being the doctor thinks. You notice mm-hmm. they changed that line. Yeah. Doctor thinks. Immediately, Joel puts it together. Cordyceps forms in the brain. Now, I believe this is in the game to Merle. De- Merle, I keep doing this. Marlene, Marlene. keeps. Uh, Marlene doesn't doesn't bother asking. Uh, if she even wants this. Nope. Ellie's unconscious. Ellie is unconscious by that point. Yeah. Like straight, straight out of almost drowning. Yeah. Uh, but in in the in the show, it's almost she's worse. She's been put it's... under, and she hasn't been given a yeah. choice. It, it's almost worse in the show because she she was still conscious by the time they picked her up, and then so they must have brought her to the hospital and then put her under. knocked her out. Oh my god, yeah. That doesn't say anything. And the worst part about it is that Marlene is so fucking sure that Ellie is fine with it. Then why don't you ask her? Especially when she was awake. Marlene is just so fixated on saving everybody that she doesn't think to ask the person that she's sacrificing whether or not they even want it in the first place. I hate this woman. She's so delusional and stupid. Arr! But uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Pretty... It, it it it's uh it's tissimi morality on both ends, but it's almost worse than the show because they just he's awake. They just, I think they did that on purpose to yeah. to have you sympath empathize with Joel even more. I think they did that purposefully. Yeah. Which, speaking of Joel, they go to escort Joel out. Oh, yeah. Uh, and the, I guess, depending on how you look at it, infamous hospital scene begins. Yeah. Uh, some some details there. They they are giving him his uh, his pack at this time. In the game, they, they, they weren't. He they, It was just one guard escorting him out. And he and they were walking, just walking by his bag that was like, like on a table. Don't mm-hmm. do said, and at that point he gets the idea to, uh, yeah, fuck the guy up because he's gonna save rescue Ellie. Uh, in the game, they're they're gonna give him his his, his pack. They they're gonna give it to him. So that's that was nice. That was an improvement. <laughs> mm-hmm. Still assholes. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, as you said, the infamous hospital sequence happens, and um. I really liked the way they chose to shoot that and put that together. Yes. By having it kind of be drowned out by the music and by just, like, the sounds of, like, what's being done. Mm -hmm. I just thought that was a really good way to do it. I was like, okay, I thought they were going to do it really straightforward, but no, they actually got creative with how they did it. So, I have a a bone to pick with Twitter here. Uh, there's people on Twitter 
or who are who believe that the show was framing Joel as the villain in here. I don't. I have heard that take, but not from Twitter. Yeah, well, there's some Twitter people there, and it's a take that I've heard, and they're like, "Why are you saying that?" I think it's because the show goes to the effort of having these like carnage shots. Uh, and also the music is very melancholic. Here's the thing. What he does in there is very in line with what we know Joel to do. Sim simply put, if Ellie is in danger, the old Joel will come back. And what he does is very in line with what we've seen as well. Mm -hmm. And... It's not a, it's not something something that should be fucking celebrated or edited in a way that's like very heroic. No, deep down, it it, it is Joel fighting people who believe Kill, deep, killing, deep in their, killing so many people, but killing people who believe deep in their hearts that they are doing something good for the world, whether either they are right or wrong. It it is essentially a tragic moment of two sides who care about Ellie uh, duking it out but Joel being the, uh, the fucking Terminator, Terminator that he is yeah I just didn't I nah, I never believed that it was Joel being Fairness, the villain in this instance but it's definitely showing it's definitely not condoning what he did I don't think the show ever once tries to condone what he does no. It is. It is showing it. I'm like, hey, this is what he's doing. We know this is morally wrong, but he's doing what he has to do. Well, they didn't he's, get him he's, a choice. He's doing what he what he thinks he has to do, and what well, he can didn't... in that moment. Well, you know, we didn't give him or Ellie a choice, so which is really what it comes down to. It all happened very fast. Um, I don't know how I feel about when they eventually get to the doctor. Uh, <laughs> the stupid ass doctor, <laughs> fucking idiot. Uh, so points the gun, it's like unhook her, and he pulls at the scalpel like he did in the game, and goes, "I can't let you do this. I won't let you take her. I won't let you this take your her. chance. This is our chance. Think of what the lives will save." I don't think I like that Joel just pops him. Oh, really? What's that? I don't know. Do you prefer him shoving the scalpel into his throat? No. I don't... Like, just When he just popped him, I was like... Like, okay. I guess if... You, I guess if that's the quickest way to do it. I don't know. Part of me is just like, please God prevent part two. Please God prevent part two. But. Uh, well, I was a okay with it. Yeah, it's just, just, it. Just, it, it, it was just someone getting his, in his weight once again, like everyone else did. So he yeah. simply popped them. Just okay. Just <laughs> well, like, first of all, that, that doctor's a stupid idiot because he was like, he took the knife out and it said, "I want you take her." And he was like, before he got shot, he was like slowly walking to Joel. What the fuck were you going to do? And then of course Joel shot him. Like, okay, but <laughs> fucking great. Uh, maybe laugh because he's stupid. Uh, and then yeah, bye bye. After after he he shot the doctor, the nurses got got the point across. Like I have a better hooker, or you know you know don't get him away. And yeah, they they unhook her. Laura Bailey was uh, terrified. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then they unhook her. Oh, so they make sure to uh banish her because she's bleeding from the little needle vein that that they put in the, in the, the IV. The IV, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then he gets her out of there. Not, be not before the camera pencil was the doctor. Oh. Yeah, not before the camera <laughs> cuts to a shot of the doctor on the ground, which is very much of a... It's it's very much a, if you know, you know. Ooh, what could that be? Yeah. That's, I mean, that's very much that. If you know, you know. If you don't yeah. know, well, you'll, you'll know eventually. 
You'll figure it out, you poor, poor soul. Um, yeah. Pretty much from here on out, it's just the game. Yeah. Joel gets out with Ellie to the parking lot, to the parking garage. Marlene shows up. Joel kills her. Um, yeah, they even do it Marlene, the same Marlene, way. Uh, they even do it the same way as the game two, where they flash forward to that yeah, flashback. Mar yeah, Marlene gives her whole uh, thing about about Ellie and how is how she would want is what she would want, even, even though you, know, you could have. <laughs> okay, Marlene. <laughs> I mean, she happened oh, to be right. Oh, oh shit! Hmm? We forgot Ellie's mom. Oh yeah, we did forget Ashley. Oh. The episode starts with a flashback to Ellie's mom the day that she gave birth to Ellie. And Marlene... Marlene was uh, Anna Williams, Ellie's mom, Anna's best friend. And after she gave birth... Right before she gave birth, she got bit by an infected and gave birth to Ellie. Yeah, which is the explanation on how she's immune. Um, I don't know if I like that... I don't know. I never needed an explanation on why Ellie can simulate. I don't think I ever needed it. It was like rather ambiguous. Now for that we a have reason. the explanation, <laughs> if Marlene were to know this, why is she bothering with the hospital? Why is she bothering going to a nurse? It seems like there's a pretty surefire way to get this to happen. Yeah. And knowing Marlene, she would definitely take those risks. Yeah. I don't know. It's just if you know how she's immune, it's then begins to ask the question why if if Marlene knows how she why she's immune and she knows the parameters to do this. Why does she need oh. to bother going to the doctor? Well, I guess it's something to get it out of her. I guess maybe so. Yeah, I mean yeah. Uh I, I don't know. Although I like I sort of have been really cool that Ashley is playing Ellie's mom. It was kind of a Worthless scene. What's this? Uh, I didn't get much. I didn't get much out of it. Well, it establishes guess... Anna and Marlene's relationship. Why that would it hurts her to do all this in the first place? Yeah, I and guess. It, I, yeah. And, it est and it establishes kind of the goal of the episode, which is how far would Joel go? How far? What will Joel sacrifice? What will Marlene sacrifice? The answer is everything. Um, On Marlene's end, at least. Yeah, I mean, you probably could have told us that in a different way with Marlene. But, yeah, it's there. Okay, what can I do? <laughs> but yeah, the episode pretty much ends the way the game the, the series the season ends the way the game ends with yep joel lying to ellie and you get the swear to me that everything you told me about the fireflies is true just like the game it ends with okay which um yeah even even knowing what Last of Us Part Two like further elaborates on that? Okay. Yeah, Ellie, Ellie knows she's he's lying. Ellie knows, and she's Ellie. One hundred percent knows. She knows, and then the game, and then the second game says, "No, I didn't know." <laughs> That's a stupid idiot. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a, it was always Ellie knew, and we knew. She cares, she cares a lot about Joel, so she trusted him to leave it as it is because Ellie knew something was wrong of I course I don't of think course she knew. I don't think it's about trust anymore I think that okay is a loss of trust from Joel she still loves him genuinely loves him but that okay is all right I know you're lying to me you now break in my trust I still love you to death but you've broken this you've taken this away from me 
That's what I've always interpreted it as. Because it's very clear that despite it, them it, never it, asking it, her for taking this away from her, this this was her purpose. Hold on. Being the that's cure. A, that, that's being that's the something cure. That's, being the cure is, was her purpose. That, that is was something what she second, felt. That is something the second game did. That the first game never even said this show. Like even this show kind of makes that clear. Right, the show, not the game. I'm not referring to the game. I thought you were interpreting the ending of the first game, and then yeah, I think I thought I thought you were relating both of them. I mean, I, mean, I kind of am, but I I do believe. All right, that. so the I game do doesn't believe do that. that. <laughs> so the game doesn't do that. I believe that. I mean, but that's that's how I interpreted that. Oh. Uh, yeah, but that's something the second game made it brought up not yeah All right. um yeah that's i mean that's that's pretty much the end of the series this i keep wanting to say series but that's the end of the season and it's pretty much the same way as the game Yeah, pretty good season, I would say. Pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Um, I don't know. Overall thoughts? Uh, I liked it. It's uh definitely one of the you know better video game adaptations that there are out there. Not the best, of course not. Uh, but yeah, uh, it it doesn't <laughs> exactly ease my my hopes for. What is to be season two? Yeah, I guess I just have to wait I and see. Not, I do and... not envy their job. No, I guess I just have to wait and see in the next three years. Yeah, or however long it will take. It'll take a while. But overall, I thoroughly enjoyed this show. Yeah, um, I echo everything you just said. It's a pretty good show. I, I it's I don't envy their job going forward. I don't envy what they have to do. Or how they're going to do it. Well. <laughs> I'm not sure they care that much. About what the fans will think. I mean they, they do of course. They want to have a good reception of the game. But like. I'm not sure they're going to get. I, I, I'm not sure they're going, to, they're going to let too many of the criticisms. That happen that happened in the second game. Change much of what they'll do. Because even Neo doesn't, didn't even buy. The. Very valid criticisms that were given shot at the game. So, I don't know. Maybe Craig will Lord save part two, but I guess I have to wait and see. Yeah. We're just going to have to wait and see and how they approach it in the first place. Yep. Because I feel like they've already addressed one issue with the fact that they want to do multiple seasons. Two seasons, I'm hoping, for part two. So, oh, thing is, do you do you think like, like you you were very relieved that they were gonna do two seasons? I think it could help fix one of the many problems that game has. What would that be? Structure. Right. It can very easily fix the structure problem, but it all depends on how they do it. Because they can either they can either tell it the exact same way and just elongate it. Or they can be smart about it and take the fact that they will maybe want to do two seasons and actually, like, restructure it. Maybe tell it in chronological order. Instead of the weird, ass-backward, fucked-up way they told it. Yes. Those are, that's just my thoughts. That's That's what I would do, or what I would hope they'd do. I'm obviously not the one in control, creative control there, so. As far as I know. No. Yeah. Uh, what would you, yeah, I, I mean, I can, I can take a guess at what you would give the show, but what would you give it? I give it a seven. I was off by a little bit. It, it's a, it's a pretty clean seven. Because, you know, Last of Us, the first game, used to be one of my favorite games of all time. Like, my favorite game of all time, it used to be. But, you know, I grew up 
got better standards. Uh, and uh, I can break the first game story pretty well. It's a pretty good story. But it is one of the most overrated games ever made. Just saying. And Last of Us, the first game, I give it like an 8. Well, the story of the game, I give it, I give the story of the game an 8. The game, the gameplay is meandering to a 4 at best. But, yeah. This is just a little lower in the scale. So I brought it down to a 7. If, if it's a, a retelling of that game with some ward aspects that are a little better times, it, it's at a, at a 7. Alright. Um, I'd give it an 8. Uh, kind of for a lot of the same reasons you just said, but I... I don't know. I, I just enjoyed the whole of it a little more. But I wasn't in love with the series. Yeah. But it's a very I, good I show. I, I like House of the Dragon more. <laughs> I also probably liked House of the Dragon more. I think I like Andor more. I didn't watch it. Boo. Eh, boo nothing. Nobody did. Oh. Nobody it's okay, it. we're, so, we're still getting season two. Yeah. All right, well. That's about enough of that, I would say, yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. All right, well. Thank you. Thank you for joining us in this fine uh, discussion of The Last of Us. We'll see you some other time. Bye! Bye!